And Frank, before you go, hey. once the crew lock is at approximately DPDT zero, you are going to close the Emer hatch MPEV, the Emer MPEV, and Koichi will be closing the EV hatch MPEV. Uh, yep, appreciate it. We're not going anywhere. We're going to watch these guys uh, exit off that hatch. I think yeah, that's it. Now, you need to copy. That's after we open the hatch, is that right? To close the uh, EV end tap. Sorry, Sam, can we see? Okay, so uh, after hatch open, uh, I close the uh, EV end tap valve, correct? That is correct, Luigi. Oh, okay, copy that. Right now inside the crew lock, the two spacewalking astronauts uh, are on the other side of that hatch. That's the crew lock. They're facing opposite directions, so um, it's actually Koichi Wakata, the EV-1 position with the red stripes. And a reminder He's for crew, when the crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, you can expect an alert tone. You want copy? Okay, crew, we show you less than 0 0.5 PSI. You are go to open and stow the EV hatch. Koichi, you'll then close the EV hatch MPEV, and Frank, you'll close the emergency MPEV. EV1 copies. I copies. Hey, dude, I'm going to slide down a little bit. Okay. You're getting a look at the outside of the International Space Station now. Uh, the International Space Station in orbital nighttime, so it's being illuminated by the lights outside. Uh, right now we're zoomed in on the hatch. Um, the thermal cover is still covering the hatch, but we did get confirmation the hatch itself is open. Again, the official start time of the spacewalk does not occur until the astronauts switch to battery power.
USB EV1 and 2 are in battery. Switch your display to Pro to verify a functional display. EV1 verified functional display. EV2 functional display. Copy. On the UIA, switch power for EV1 and 2 off and check that the LEDs for EV1 and 2, that's four LEDs total, are off. Power for EV1 and 2 is off, LEDs off. Copy. Disconnect your SCU from your DCM and install the DCM in its cover. These are copies in work. All right, with that, the uh, two spacewalkers have switched their uh, spacesuit powers to battery. That marks the official start for today's spacewalk. We got a clock up on the board, uh, and so we're looking at 7.14 a.m. Uh, Central Time for the official start of today's spacewalk. Okay, copy your SCUs are disconnected and stowed and make sure you have your DCM cover installed. DCM cover installed. DCM cover installed. Check depressed pump man isovalve closed. Depressed pump man isovalve closed. Set your temperature control valve to max hot. TV must be work. TV two in work. TCV max hot. TCV max hot. Copy one and two. Switch water on. DCM blank and bite is off. DV1 verified. DV2 verified. Set your temperature control valve as desired, report to MCC, and reminder to report all subsequent TCV changes. DV1 copies. TCV 5. TCV 2, TCV 4. Okay, copy 5 and 4. Report your suit P gauge to MCC. TCV 1, suit P gauge 4.3. TCV 2, 4.3. Copy 4.3. 
4.3 for both of you. Set your visors as required. You'll be coming out into a night pass. Okay, crew, with that, you are ready to open the hatch thermal cover. Koichi, you'll release the hook from the magnetic plate D-ring, attach the hook to the stowage tether point, and cinch the strap until it's snug with six lines visible. TV line in work. Wakata now pushing the uh, fabric thermal cover that's on the outside of the Kulox hatch see him pushing that sort of out of the way. The hatch is open. All of the steps that they've been doing up to this point is really um, the closeout procedures for everything they've been working on for the depressurization, getting their suits ready. They've already checked their tethers. Um, right now, uh, they'll push open the uh, thermal hatch and they'll exit one at a time. Wakata first, Please, since he's the one. To the uh, sewage tether point, and I see six lights visible. Copy, Koichi. Koichi, you are go to egress the airlock. Once you've egressed, turn on your HECA. Duke, for you, you'll be retrieving the cable Copy. bag and prepping it to pass to Koichi once he's out. Thermal cover is open. Wakata now exiting the hatch. The HECA that was mentioned is the uh, high-definition camera that's mounted on the um, spacesuit's helmet. Wakata out the hatch. You can see um, when following along throughout the spacewalk, you'll be able to um, notice him by the suit with the red stripes. Nicole Mann, uh, call sign Duke. Um, she'll be coming out afterwards. Both of them will do a tether configuration check once again. They already did one inside the hatch. They'll do it again outside. Uh, configure their suits and make sure they have all the materials okay. needed before yeah. they translate out. When you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the hook eyes on, okay? Copy and I'm on. local, they, uh, you can, uh, can, okay? And uh, you, you can give me the uh, cable bag. Okay, I see that. Okay, let me grab that. The silver reels you see floating in front of uh, EV-1, Koichi Wakata, with the red stripes. That, those are the tethers that I mentioned. They'll be doing a tether check uh, once both of them are outside the hatch. And you can sort of see Duke, uh, EV-2, Nicole Mann, um, exiting the hatch after Wakata. They are in a night pass right now, although um, very soon they'll be uh, seeing an orbital sunrise. Okay, the VR keyed to the cable back. I'm going to release the red. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, okay. okay here we go. Okay, you got it. Duke, you'll stow that ret on the airlock D-ring extender. And when you're ready, you can transfer the strut bag out to EV-1. Okay, I'm 
I'm not presenting the strut bag like we talked about. Okay, so I'm going to come in a little bit to pull it out. Okay, I've got it up in the corner. Okay. And I'm trying to get the bottom end towards you. All right. Let me come in a little bit to grab it. Okay. So I think I see a red from the uh, cable box. Yeah. And I'm going to show my left side, see if you can see it there. Okay, let me I check. think it got caught on my... Okay, wait. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see if I need to check that. Uh, the VFT. I'm 
nicely. Okay, yeah, it's coming nicely. All of this work uh, that you're seeing right now is uh, Wakata and Man, or, or Callside Duke, working together to get this very long bag out of the uh, crew lock. This is really, of all the tools they're going to be bringing out to the work site, this is the star of the show. That bag uh, contains the uh, modification kit flattened uh, with all of the pieces necessary uh, for them to uh, construct it. Um, right now, this is a picture from a previous strut uh, with an open bag. You can see all of the different components. Today, we'll be working on taking this and turning it into the fully constructed modification kit on the 1A channel. This is a very important piece of equipment that's going to be making its way with the astronauts. They're going to attach it to themselves as they move out to the work site today. On the top handrail of the crew lock. Copy that. Houston's following along, and we like the plan for that ret as well. You can leave it where it is. Okay. Great problem solving there, guys. Looking good. BRT is the body restraint tether for uh, Duke oh, with, the, the suit with uh, no stripes. She'll be attaching that strut bag to her body restraint tether. Attached to uh, Koichi is uh, a bag full of cables. On his way over to the 1B work site, he's going to stop along the way and temporarily stow that bag full of cables for the work later on. Uh, while uh, Man, or Duke, has the um, uh, job of taking that strut bag over to the 1A channel. What you'll hear uh, when they talk to each other, they'll be doing buddy checks and um, saying how each other's spacesuit looks and reporting that to each other. Uh, they do have some procedures to um, uh, make sure all of their uh, suit components are in a good uh, spot before they actually translate or move over. Yeah. 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 
my visor's down too. But these uh, procedures are all about communication. Houston copies, and once you've got your visor, International Space Station is over, is over the South Pacific Ocean right now. We'll uh, we're entering into an orbital daytime, okay. so you're seeing the sun rise over the okay. horizon of the Earth right now. Okay, so your umbilical is set. Uh, Phone number set? Yeah, yeah, now it's set. Uh, oh, it's clear. Okay. Now oh, it's out it of the pouch, clear. though. Yeah, now it should be clear. Let me get it back in the pouch, though. Okay, I'll, I'll work on it. And why, why don't you do the, uh, the, 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 the And thank you, crew. We appreciate you taking care of the SEU. It does need to go back in its pouch. We appreciate it. Houston copies all, you guys are looking great. Down. 
and I don't tools are good and tether is good. Okay. You check. Okay, I see your green headset, your green WCS, your lights are on, that looks good. I've got one, two, three tabs up on your mini workstation. Um I'm look at your handles. Okay. Okay, you've got one and two safer handles are down. Okay. I see your safety tether. Looks like it's a good concern in the BRT. Okay. Copy that. Vina with that. We'll complete with the yes. Body check. Okay, crew. We'll take a baseline hap from both of you. Hey, Vina, the hap is dry. Baseline for okay, copy. Good baseline hat for both of you. You can take a couple minutes here to do some translation adaptation. So play around with your body rotation, pitch, yaw, roll, various hand grips, translation without rotation, and try attaching a local tether and releasing both hands. Just a reminder, this first hour will set your medox for the rest of the EVA, so just take it nice and deliberate, take it easy. You want copies? You do copies. Getting some uh, wonderful views from the outside of the International Space Station right now. The duo are just at the beginning of their planned six and a half hour spacewalk. They're getting a sunrise over the South Pacific Ocean and we're getting uh, great high definition views from their helmet cameras right now. Uh, they just finished performing buddy checks, and you heard the ground IVZ and a Cartman uh, telling them to take their time. Of course, they have done uh, plenty of spacewalk training, including here on the ground uh, at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston is a laboratory called the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, uh, where they practice these things underwater. It is a very good analog for understanding what it's like in the microgravity environment, but the two of them now are first-time spacewalkers, so they're going to take some time on the outside of the hatch to just get Get used to understanding the differences between uh, performing the spacewalk in a pool with the resistance of water and having no resistance uh, in the vacuum of space. Um, their translation path uh, or their movement out to the work site is, is all the way out on the wings of the International Space Station on the solar arrays. So they do have uh, uh, quite a bit of, of, of translation to go to, so they're just sort of getting their bearings, making sure they understand their movements before they make that journey. And once again, uh, we have another increment in, uh, gap in communication from the International Space Station. Uh, we mentioned being over the South Pacific Ocean at this time. Uh, throughout today's spacewalk, we'll see gaps like these. The space station communicates by way of geosynchronous satellites uh, called the TDRS network, tracking and data relay satellites. Um, we'll get intermittent gaps of audio and video. Sometimes we regain the audio a little bit earlier. Just as now you're hearing the audio come from the International Space Station, so we'll be regaining that shortly. Teams here in Mission Control Houston are monitoring today's spacewalk as well as the International Space Station and the crew inside. Uh, it'll be the teams here that are walking our astronauts through today's procedures. Zena Cartman, you see in the middle there uh, with the black blazer and the white shirt, uh, that is uh, NASA astronaut. Zena Cartman, ground IV, it's her voice uh, that's being communicated uh, from all the work the te uh, that the teams are doing here in Mission Control Houston. She's translating that up to the crew. It's an awesome view here. And stand by one, Koichi. We're actually checking on the SEUs in the airlock. Okay. We're having the IV crew check on that through the hatch window. Okay. Just for your awareness, on your left side, your tethers are over the top of the BRT. It's going to be a, a problem just when you, uh, after you get that bag off. It's gonna... Yes, I understand that. Yeah, okay. I see that. that. Thanks. That's a good check.
in a way. Okay, crew, we're back with you. We did see one of the SUs came out of its pouch, but we are actually good with that as long as the thermal cover is tended closed. And so with that, you can go ahead and start translating. Easy one, you'll be translating out to the anchor hooks that are nadir of the starboard seated arch. Duke, if you can tend the hatch thermal cover closed, that's very helpful. Continue your translation adaptation. And the journey begins now that uh, they've done all that they can on the outside of the uh, airlock's hatch, um, getting all of their tools, attaching it to their body restraint tether, making sure their tethers are in a good configuration, sort of doing an adaptation. Uh, now we're following Koichi Wakata with the high-definition camera, uh, and he's translating or moving out to the work site, so he's going to begin his journey now. You guys are looking great. And just a reminder, as you translate, to also keep your uh, cable bags and strut bags in your scan so that they don't hit anything either. If you have copies, you still have copies. For those just tuning in, uh, we're following along uh, by way of the helmet camera of Koichi Wakata. They've uh, exited the hatch and started their spacewalk officially at 7.14 a.m. Central Time. Uh, did some buddy checks and made sure they had all their tools attached to them. Uh, you can see there, attached to his body restraint tether, uh, Koichi Wakata has a cable bag in tow. Uh, right now he's heading over to the... Uh, S4 truss, section of the truss, he's going to okay. leave that yeah. cable bag there and then go to the 1B work site. Um, they're splitting up to begin with. Uh, okay, Koichi right. Wakata is going to drop off that bag and then finish up tightening. Constructed um, uh, 
mounting platform that's on the 1B truss. He's just got to use that pistol grip tool or basically a, a cordless drill uh, to tighten some bolts. Uh, not much work there. It's really just going to take the first hour uh, of his uh, of his task. Uh, while Nicole Mann, by call sign Duke, will be hearing that over space to ground today, she's going to go over to the directly to the 1A worksite with uh, the strut bag in tow. Um, that strut bag has the mounting platform itself in it, uh, so she'll begin the construction there uh, while uh, Koichi Wakata finishes up the construction on the 1B site. And then for the remainder of today's spacewalk, um, the two will focus on working together to construct that mounting platform on the 1A channel. Looking good, Koichi. You'll be keeping eye out for S3 handrail 3011 for your Copy that. I see that here. middle of the frame there, it, uh, you, you can see a um, digital camera. The lens is the thing that makes it the most apparent, but it's covered with uh, insulation to protect it uh, from the thermal environment outside the International Space Station. So uh, Koichi Wakata will be able to take some photos, uh, both for engineering purposes to show the work that they're doing, uh, as well as take some beautiful photos of Earth and of the work outside. Koichi, and that's S1 handrail Duke Santa Hook is attached to uh, S1-3217, gate closed, hook locked, and Duke, we have a go to release your waste center from the airlock in the heat center. Copy. It works. Houston copy is looking good. Thank 
Tears Weight Center is released from the airlock D-ring extender. Thermal cover is closed. We copy. Released from the airlock D-ring extender and thermal cover closed. With that, you can start translating Duke out to the one alpha work site. Just take it slow and easy. And before you cross the start, check that your gauntlets are in place. And same for you, Kuichi, okay, so, uh, as you head out to S4, make sure that your gauntlets are in place before you cross the Sarge. Copy that, Scott. Gauntlets are in place. I'm going to go to the S4 work site. Perfect. From phase one, you'll be trending Zenith to the non-radiator edge, looking for S4 handrail 2219 when you get out there. Copy that, 2219. You guys are looking good. Koichi will have to just continue to take it nice and slow and easy. Make sure we keep your meta trending average for the rest of the EVA. For those following along, you're seeing a split screen here from the high-definition helmet cameras on both of our spacewalkers today. Uh, Koichi Wakata making his way out to the 1B channel. He's going to stop along the way, and he's got a, a bag, a cable bag in tow on his body restraint tether. And has some of the cables for some of the secondary work as well as, well as GoPros, some of the other tools and materials that they need for uh, the non-primary um, work that they're doing. While Nicole Mann or Call Sign Duke has the strut bag, that's the primary thing that they're doing. Nicole Mann just finished up her work. That she had to make sure the thermal cover on the EVA hatch was closed and make sure there's no um, thermal fluctuation inside of the crew lock where they just exited to begin today's spacewalk. Both of of them now translating or moving out to their respective work sites. Now we're getting high definition views. This is Nicole Mann, call sign Duke. She's wearing the suit with no stripes and she's got that giant bag with her. That's the strut bag that has the mounting platform uh, that they're going to be installing today. Both of them will be uh, working on the 1A channel. Koichi Wakata's got to make a stop first to work on the 1B. Um, but Nicole Mann's going to get uh, get started right away. So she's got that bag in tow. Uh, she'll be able to unbuckle uh, some of the straps that are holding those components in place, uh, retrieve some of the materials and it is a they'll be installing it one at a time um, the ground teams have plenty of experience with this type of work this is this will be the sixth modification kit that use these struts to attach to a, a mast canister um, so they're prepared for uh, any of uh, issues or troubleshooting they need to do along the way um, and that work will be being done soon right now we're just watching the translation or the movement stand by Koichi. You'll need to actually backtrack just a little bit. Let me give you a good handrail pass. Okay. Okay, so uh, I come down a little bit and then uh, Koichi, you're doing a good thing. You can head outboard from there. That was a good move going towards your feet. Okay, 2219 is what I have. So I keep going. That's perfect. You'll be pausing here to stow the cable bag. So this is the inboard non-radiator right. so, corner. 
So that will be on handrail 2219 and 2215 using integral tethers with the handrail for the radiator. Okay. Okay, copy that. I see them. Actually, that was really close. I'm coming underneath the MT. Okay, copy that. I'm at the uh, pencil location of the cable bag. Zina, the pedestal uh, orientation is the handrail away from the, uh, towards the radiator side, is that right? That's correct, the handrail towards the radiator. And Koichi, we'll actually have you okay. hang out there for just a second. As we know, every Medox canister is a different character. Uh, yours is trending a little bit high right now. So we'll okay. just pause and make sure that we can okay. maintain that good Medox canister for the rest of the EVA. Okay, copy that. I'm passing our uh, anchor hook state of the Okay. Thanks. Okay, Koichi, thanks for hanging for a sec. We'll have you stow that cable bag, again, with the handrail toward the radiator using okay. 2219 and 2215. Copy that. Okay, copy. We see you both. Looks like you've got good eyes on for deconfliction. Yeah, and Zena, my gauntlets are down. Copy, gauntlets down, Duke. We copy, I like that plan too. Okay, cable bag is about to handrail 2219 and 2215 with the uh, handrail towards the radiator. That's perfect, good config. With that, you can fair lead on X4 handrail 2219. And we'll have to translate out to your green hook location. 
This will be more toward the S5, S6 interface, and then over the A-frame to the Venus non-radiator side. And just a reminder to take it really nice and slow and easy. We've got that trending high Medox canister, so just take your time. I'll do that. Okay, uh, then I'm gonna start translating. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Okay, safety feathers in good config. I'm going to continue upwards. Copy, Duke. You'll be following the keel side non radiator edge, following handrail 2219, and continuing outboard to 2231. For those following along, we're getting high-definition views from the outside of the International Space Station. The two spacewalkers are going to be splitting up uh, for the first of their tasks. Um, Koichi Wakata translating over to the 1B work site. He had a cable bag in tow along the way and um, stored it in a location so they can easily access it later. There's some materials in there they need for some future work uh, that's later in the timeline. For now, though, Koichi Wakata really only needs his pistol grip tool. Um, the uh, mounting platform on the 1B channel was constructed on a previous EVA and really just needs a little bit of tightening um, and some last-minute work to finish it up. So he can do that by himself. He's just going to use that, do that for about the first hour of the spacewalk once he gets there. Uh, that'll really start the clock for him to perform some of that work. In the meantime, you're watching um, EV2, Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, uh, translating or moving out to the 1A uh, channel. In tow, she's got a strut bag. That's the struts that they're going to actually be building together. Wakata will join Mann uh, later in today's spacewalk. She'll just get a head start and uh, start some of that work here soon. Okay, copy that. You know, I've got a local down. I'm dropping the bag. Okay, copy that, Duke. And a reminder for Koichi, just a quick caution to minimize loads into the wire ties that are on that MLI there. Uh, should be right nearby handrail 2008. Okay, I see that. Thank you. Duke, for you, you're stowing that strut bag, as you know, I'm sure, on the outboard non-radiator corner of the IEA. Looking for handrails 2222, 2236, and 2251, but that's also up to your prerogative a little bit. You want the tape towards the mass canister and handrail for the radiator. Green Hope is attached to handrail 207. 2007. Okay, copy. Green Hook is down. With that, you can translate out 
towards the One Bravo mass canister. And reminder that at the One Bravo okay. IEA, you'll be crossing to the radiator side. So follow S6 handrail 2032. Copy 2032. So I got one uh, tether down to the back of NBC, my CRT and CRT red. Copy that, Duke. I'm at the 2060 at the and uh, I translate to the uh, outboard to go to the uh, left side of the uh, of it, correct? Yeah, you'll be crossing to the radiator side and on the radiator side heading outboard to the mass canister. Oh, and. Yes, you will be going to the left side of the mod kit. With that, we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check. Okay. After I get there, or do I want me to do it now? Gloves are good. Hap is dry. Copy. Good gloves and hap. And we also see that your gauntlets are done. Can I keep translating? Yes, you can. Great. Copy that. And I got uh, big picture update for both of you. You're pretty much right on the timeline. And our limiting consumable right now is Medox with a 630 PET. So that's a good report from the ground IV, uh, Zena Cardman. Uh, along the way, the teams continue to monitor the progress uh, through the procedures, as well as something called limiting consumables. Uh, the spacesuits that they're wearing um, has everything they need in terms of life support. It has it provides the pressure, the air, it provides water, uh, it also provides battery power. Everything is portable uh, as they do this work outside of the International Space Station. Now an hour into today's spacewalk, we plan for six and a half hours. Uh, everything seems to be on track in terms of the timeline and the limiting consumables. They'll continue to monitor this throughout as it could fluctuate, uh, but right now we're looking good. until it's fully installed. See that I am uh, translated up on the uh, 2097 handrail on the canister, and I'm at the left side. That's perfect. Okay, Nina, I've got the back down also on uh, 2227. I'm going to head in to get the ACFR. All right, copy Duke. With that, you can translate inboard to the starboard CETA with one and grab that APFR. Koichi, for you, once you're at the left collar bolts, you'll be going outboard under the yep, BGA platform on the broom. Okay, you're there. You'll be opening the MLI around the mid yeah, collar to access the collar bolts. Okay. Okay, I see that. I open the MMI. I can access to both the color bolts. That's perfect. I've got a great view in your HECA now. Okay, I have PGT settings for you when you're ready. Okay. I see that. 
the uh, key to the uh, handrail on the bench truck. And I'm ready for a PGT setting. Okay, great. And just a quick reminder here, while you're BRT'd to that mid-strut handrail, minimize normal and torsional loads into the mid-strut. Your PGT settings will be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. So right now, Koichi Wakata is at the work site of the 1B channel. You can sort of see the, the struts on the right side of the mast canister. That's taking up most of the center of the frame there. Um, the mounting platform on the 1B channel is constructed. He's got the pistol grip tool, uh, basically a cordless power drill. Um, they have cordless, they have uh, the torque settings uh, programmed into the tool so they know exactly how much torque uh, to, um, to work onto the various parts of the struts. So he's on the left side right now. He opened the multi-layer insulation, the white fabric, to access the bolt on the left side. Uh, so he'll be, the, f the first part of his task is to work on some of the bolts there. Okay, Koichi, you'll be uh, driving M29 and M30 to torque. We're expecting about four to six turns, looking for turn count, torque, and green light. I'll do that. Four to six turns expected. I arrived at the uh, roof. I'm going to uh, pitch the golf on the whiffex. Copy that, Duke. Okay, uh, Zena, I got a green light and I talked out. And I see uh, Oak is 25.5. 25.8, and the revolution is, uh, I count it uh, three and a half visually, but it says, uh, revolution is uh, 029 on the BGT. Okay, copy, 25.8 on the torque and three and a half turns counted visually. Looking for a green light as well, and to confirm that was M29? The lower side, and uh, I don't see a label here. All right, Koichi, we're going to talk about the turn count on that one, but while we're doing that, you can go to the other bolts and same number okay. of turns expected, about four to six. Looking for torque and green light as well. Great, copy. So again, the pistol grip tool, that cordless power drill that Koichi Wakata is holding now, um, has the turn count and the uh, torque settings. He's tightening with a clockwise rotation, the different collar bolts on the left part of the uh, mounting platform's strut. He tightened one, and as the ground team has assessed that color bolt settings, he'll be working on the next. Knob popped out. Copy, golf, and knob popped out. You can retrieve the WIPEX and APFR and stow it on your BRT when you're ready, and translate out to S4. It works. It works. I tried on the upper side, uh, the uh, visually confirmed the two turns, and then uh, it just came up, and I see uh, two, and uh, 
I don't see. Guichi, you're coming in a little broken there. Could you repeat your last? I heard two turns and did not copy the rest. Okay, uh, uh, Zina, I visually confirmed the two turns on the upper bolt, and I got the two uh, lights, uh, low torque, and uh, torque value shows 20.2, and I don't see any turn counts on the PGT. Copy that, Koichi. We'll have you try that bolt again. Just make sure you're in a good body position for uh, leverage on that PGT. And we'll have you hit the upper bolt See one that? more time. Okay, copy that. On the uh, APFL Wisex, I'm releasing the Wisex. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Visually, another. A little over one third. I got a green light and torqued out in the torque value 25.5. And it the torque out is 1.42. Okay. Copy one additional turn, green light, and 25.5 on the torque. We'll talk about those numbers for just a moment here. Okay, Kuichi, we'll have you move on here. We're going to set the PGT to manual ratchet clockwise, and then you'll be driving M29 and 30 until you get two MTL pops. So we'll expect several extra turns here. Just keep an eye out and give us a turn count visually. Copy that. Manual ratchet, and that's going to do the manual on the gear. Lower side bolt. Copy, starting with the lower bolt. Okay, it falls on my DRT panel there. What's the problem, Bob? Copy, Duke. Uh, good news. You can translate out to S4 with 25. Okay, uh, on the lower bolt, uh, two pops. The bolt turn is approximately 90 degrees, a quarter of a turn. Okay, copy one quarter additional turn and two pops on the MTL. That's a good beat. Okay, Koichi, we're going to talk about that bolt, but meanwhile you can go to the upper bolt and do the same thing in manual ratchet. Copy that. So a quick recap, there are two bolts on this left strut that Koichi Wakata is working at. We're looking at him, his helmet camera view. He's using the pistol grip tool to hand tighten each of the bolts. Now that he's done a rotation, just uh, hand tighten them, them to torque. In the meantime, Nicole Mann is on the other work site. She's preparing and grabbing the materials she needs, including a work restraint, uh, to start constructing uh, the mounting platform. Um, from, Waki from Koichi Wakata's view, you can see sort of the final product of that mounting platform on the 1B channel. That's what they'll be building on 1A. I, uh, I'm using the manual ratchet. It rotated about uh, half a turn, and still it does not pop. Okay, copy half a turn. You can keep going if you're able. We want to get two MTL pops. 
Can I continue the uh, two MTL pops? A firm. Go to continue. We'll look for two MTL okay. pops on the upper one. Okay. That was one pop. Okay, two pops complete on the upper bolt. Okay, copy. Two pops complete on the upper bolt. Were there any additional turns after that half turn? Another quarter turn and two pops on the upper bolt. Okay, give us just a second to talk about that bolt. Okay. And while we give the MER and EVA a moment to talk about that, you can just hang out, take some photos for your awareness. Your net rate is looking really good right now, looking a lot better. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely trending better from before. Duke, as a reminder for you, before you cross the Sarge, check that your gauntlets are in place. Another in intermittent gap in communications from the International Space Station. The teams here in um, Houston's Mission Control are overseeing the spacewalk for today. Two spacewalking astronauts, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann, working on uh, upgrades to the power channel and some of the prep work needed for the arrival of IROSAs, or International Space Station rollout solar arrays, uh, later this summer. Uh, they'll be working on two mounting platforms, one on the 1B channel and another on the 1A. Uh, Koichi Wakata is already at the 1B channel uh, tightening some bolts uh, as part of the final steps uh, to make sure that mounting platform is secure. Uh, it's expected that that's going to take just the first yeah, hour or so of the spacewalk, and he's already getting on a great timeline uh, for getting that work bolts, done. Which is great news. So if you haven't already, you can set your PGT back to motor and stow it. Then close the MLI to cover the power bolts. And that note from Zena Cardman here in Mission Control saying that the two bolts on the left collar uh, are complete, so he's going to close up the multi-layer insulation, sort of the white fabric that protects it thermally from the vacuum of space and the harshness of the sun, um, and he'll work on some of the next struts. The next one should be the mid strut that he'll be working on. In the meantime, uh, Nicole Mann is prepping her work site, uh, which is the 1A channel. Um, she's getting some materials she needs. She's got, uh, she already stowed the bag uh, that has the um, uh, the struts inside, and those struts will be what will be used to actually construct the mounting platform on the mast canister uh, of the 1A channel. Uh, she got the foot restraint, um, uh, retrieved it from one of the work sites, and you can sort of see it attached to her uh, right now from this view on the outside of the space station. That foot restraint is going to help to access some of the areas that are needed uh, for actually constructing that mounting platform. Uh, she'll be able to ingress or, or uh, enter that, that uh, foot restraint uh, and give her the leverage that she needs um, to uh, actually drive some of the bolts and, and actually construct the uh, mounting platform. So she's got that in tow and she's going to be going over to the 1A work site very soon to get it ready uh, while Koichi Wakata continues to finish up the work on the 1B side.
yes. The, uh, whatever I cover is uh, put it back uh, with the with the background back on the uh, uh, cover bolt. Okay, copy that, Koichi. We don't have your HECA right now, but we do have your WVS. And so with that, you can translate to the right side cover okay. bolt. Okay. I'm going to put this in a list 25 with a clocking of six. Good work, Duke. Clocking of six. I'm tracking golf is already set, and let me know when you're ready for the extension. Okay. And, of course, we'll be looking for black on black with a good pull test as well. Right now you're looking at the helmet camera of Duke, uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. She's at the 1A worksite right now, and uh, you see her installing the uh, articulating portable foot restraint. Um, this foot restraint has the ability to um, have some settings to angle the foot restraint so that uh, it can reach predetermined marks uh, that are needed for um, the upcoming work to actually install some of the struts. So she's uh, installing that right now. Uh, she's going to check the, the settings on the articulating portable foot restraint, make sure it's really at the right angle uh, so that she can access some of the first um, uh, bolts and uh, areas that she needs to access for some of the upcoming work. You guys will be flying over Japan in a couple minutes. Wave hello for us. Awesome. Thank you. You know, I've got a clocking of six with a good pull twist test. Okay, copy, good pull, twi pull twist test and a clocking of six. Uh, we'll also take a black on black check for that one color. Uh, yes, black on black. Okay, copy, and the extension there will be five for the WIFX. the two first-time okay, spacewalkers uh, sharing their progress for today. The, uh, right side, I'm hoping, opening the Okay, copy, and before you do that, we'll actually take a HECA cycle from both of you. Just one button push on your HECA. And correction, just Koichi.
Okay, aircraft should be on now. Now, do you see that? We copy that, Koichi. It'll probably take us about a minute before we see any change here. But for now, uh, we hear that you are in place. You can okay. open the MLI around the mid-struck collar to access those bolts, M25 and M26. Okay. And I'll have BGT settings when you're ready. Okay, copy that. Okay, that right. I mean, I started working on the uh, pitch here. I've got the, the knob is unlocked, um, and um, we're looking for Tango Tango, but it is a uh, pretty stiff adjustment. Copy. That is okay, the correct setting. And copy that it's stiff. Koichi, for you, PGT settings will be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Okay, Adina, your cutoff is the Bravo 7, uh, clockwise 2, is that correct? Hey, firm, Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Can you see in my HECA? We do see your HECA. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. Got the black line pointed towards unlock. It's in Papa Papa. Now we have uh, both helmet camera views from Koichi Bakata and Nicole Mann. Hands on the whip extender and then I'm we are pushing up on it. I don't know if you have any ideas. Uh, while you think about that, I'll move on to the um, with exit extender. Copy, Duke. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, Zena, and that extension the lower bolt. Uh, Zena, you got a lower bolt, uh, green light of DGT, 25.4 pounds, 4.14 turns. Question four point two one seven nine turns. Okay, Koichi, copy green light twenty five point four on the torque and four turns visually. That's correct, and then the PGT shows the four point seven nine turns. Copy Koichi. You can go to M26 now. This is the other bolt. Same deal. We're expecting about four okay. to six turns. Copy that. Copy work. Okay, Kalee, uh, Zena, as we talked about, I'm going to move on to the triangle until Kalee gets here so we can work together on that pitch. Okay, copy that, Duke. So if you want to, one other thing you can try is using the boot plate for some extra leverage. But again, we'll uh, take your expertise here and okay. happy to wait until Koichi gets there. You can also do the rest of the APFR settings if you'd like. 
So a quick re recap of where we are. We're seeing both the helmet cameras of Koichi Bukata and Duke. Uh, on the left, Koichi Bukata working on the mid strut. There's uh, various components of the mounting platform. He's asking for the settings that are needed on his cordless power drill to drive some of the bolts. On the right side, Duke is preparing the work site for installing a mounting platform on the 1A channel, and she's working on the um, portable foot restraint. You can see sort of the area where her feet will soon go later. Okay, in the timeline, making sure that that's in a good configuration. So they're both at two different work sites right now. Visually, it's uh, more than four. Okay, copy. That's perfect. About five turns. With that, you can set your PGT to manual ratchet clockwise, and you'll be torquing both of those bolts. Looking for any additional turns, report those to us, and two MTL pops on each. We've got a quick handover coming here. We're making here. progress here over the ingress aid and the boot plate. Copy, Duke. Great work. So same as he did with the left strut, on the mid strut, Koichi Wakata is uh, first using the pis pistol grip tool to uh, drive uh, with the tool itself, followed by some manual ratcheting to um, finalize the torque on each of the bolts. So right now he's working on that mid strut. And then once again we're um, in a handover period, so we're going to temporarily lo lose some of the video and audio from the space station. We're getting audio first, it seems like we're, we're getting some sounds from the space station. Back with you guys after a quick handover. Koichi, we were tracking you were in manual ratchet, but have not heard the report yet. And Duke, we're tracking you're working on the APF. Okay, so Zena on the lower side bolt, I got a two pops of the manual ratchet, another quarter turn. Copy, two pops, additional quarter turn on the lower bolt. And the upper bolt is the same, uh, two pops I got, and uh, additional quarter turn. Okay, copy, two pops and additional quarter turn. That's a good bolt on both of those. So with that, you can set your PGT back to motor and stow it. You can also now translate on the One Bravo mod kit. Copy. Then, uh, I can translate to uh, One Alpha model kit, right? Yeah, after this, you'll be uh, closing the MLI on the collar bolts, and yes, you can translate on the One Bravo mod kit. Okay, I understand. Copy that. Duke, if you feel like that APFR is behaving, you can feel free to continue work on it, but we can also have you pause and head to the upper triangle and wait for Koichi to get over there. Okay, so I've got it in tango, tango. I'm just trying to get that knob locked. It's about halfway there. Tough times. So as we regain video back from the International Space Station. Hey, Firm, we've got a heck of you, and copy the MLI. Okay. The next is the HECA scan from the uh, anti bracket. Copy. The uh, MLI over the collar bolts is just out of our view in your HECA right now. So if you can reposition just a smidge, we'll take a look, but we'll also just trust your eyes on whether that's covering the collar bolts. Do you see the view? Let me know which direction I need to move. Yeah, you look great there, Koichi. We can have you head to the mounting bracket, check that it's clear of MLI, and you'll probably have an even better view from over there. Copy that. You know, I've got a 
that y'all of uh, 12 full of Foxtrot. That, that's not, it's not halfway there, and it's um, Fox, so when I get to uh, Tool, I'll use the Tool, but I'm going to start working on the triangle right now. Copy that plan, Duke. We like it. So we've got Tango Tango Fox 12. Those are good settings, but the pitch knob is still uh, not back out. Um, and I like the plan to start working on the triangle. We'll come back with the tool. Duke, when you have a moment, we'll take a glove tap and call the check as well. Copy, Gucci. Okay, so I'm on the uh, mountain bracket. Uh, you have a good view. Checking, Kuichi. Which you were taking a look there. It's a little bit dark in your camera view. We'll trust your uh, visual report as well. Okay, so uh, as far as the MRI, uh, the left side is uh, covered up pretty well. In the right side, I can still a little bit. Uh, it's covering the uh, <coughs> color bolt area. And uh, there's still some um, gap, and I can sink it down a little, uh, firmly down. Okay, Koichi, we copy all. Um, you're ahead of the timeline right now, so we'll use this time to have you go over and adjust that MLI, just take care of whatever gap you see. Okay, copy that. And Koichi Wakata is still working on the 1B site. He's uh, going to take some time. That white fabric okay. that's on the outside of these struts, just make sure that's nice and tight. Um, Duke Nicole Mann on the 1A site uh, working on the portable foot restraint. Uh, she's also going to start building the different components of the mounting platform, starting with the upper triangle, the, the topmost part of the mounting bracket. Do you want me to do another hacker scan? Copy, Koichi, checking. Okay, I'm already there, and the uh, mountain bracket, and I don't know if you can see the heck of you, but uh, yeah. now the uh, MLI is covering. Copy, Koichi. That's a good view. We're taking a look. Okay, Koichi, we're taking a look, and we see a flap of MLI open on the telescoping end of the strut, if you see that as well. We'll have you go over and see if you can get that to close with the Velcro. You got on the right side? Affirm, Koichi. Copy that. In work. Engineers on the ground assessing the 
uh, configuration of the uh, mounting platform where Kuiji Wakata is currently working. We're getting a view from his and helmet camera there. Looking at the uh, multi-layer insulation, yeah, that white fabric, they just really want to make sure it's it's covered very nicely and once it's in a good configuration, we'll get confirmation from the ground teams that they're happy with it uh, and uh, Koichi Wakata will be able to move on to the next uh, task. Okay, uh, Zina, I don't know if you can see my head of you, but uh, I uh, use this integrated via tie to secure this uh, uh, little bit uh, open MRI. Does that look good to you? That looks beautiful, Koichi. We really like that. With that, we can have you depart this work site, and you'll be translating over to One Alpha. Copy that, translating to One Alpha. That's perfect. You'll head to the IEA via that right lower strut. Minimize translation on the mid strut if you can, and then you'll be going inboard on the S6 IEA. At the inboard edge, cross to the non-radiator side. For Koichi Wakata, there are three main tasks that he needs to accomplish over at the mounting platform. Uh, he was working his way basically clockwise around the mounting platform. He started on the left side uh, to work on two bolts, um, then completed the, the mid-strut bolts. Now he's going to uh, complete his work by tightening the two bolts that are on the right side. Of course, checking that multi-layer insulation, that white fabric along the way, making sure that looks good. Uh, but once he's done, he'll really uh, proceed into some cleanup steps uh, and then go over to translate to the 1A worksite where Nicole Mann is currently uh, starting to construct some of the components of the uh, of the mounting bracket over there, and then they'll work on that side together. Okay, copy that, Duke. You can keep that tethered to the bag, lock out the threat if you need to. You'll be aligning the right upper strut L7 to the mounting bracket right side. Check that the alignment tab is in the groove and the black lines are aligned on the end of the mounting bracket. I'll have PGT settings when you're ready. So over on the 1A channel, uh, Duke is building the mounting bracket. You can see from this um, graphic right here what that's going to look like. So that upper part with the sort of pinkish purple part is the upper triangle. She's right now building that first. Uh, so she's getting a head start on there, and it's going to attach to what's called the mast canister. That's that greenish, bluish um, soda can looking structure. Uh, that's where the legacy solar arrays were originally deployed from, and this is really a, sort of an adapter to allow the uh, IROSA solar arrays to attach to the mounting bracket. That's that uh, sort of bluish indigo part labeled there on the left, the IROSA mounting bracket. So she's just right now building that, that upper structure. Koichi, if you can pause right there, you'll be following your safety okay. tether back inboard to the One Alpha work site. We see you not quite translating in the right, right path. Okay, it looks like it's uh, a 
see that. So on the inboard edge of the IEA, we would have you cross back over to the non-radiator side. You can also follow the handrails that are in front okay. of you to the other side of the IEA. Copy that. Once you're on the non-radiator okay. side, you can head inboard along the zenith edge. You'll follow S6 handrail 2008, and you'll be picking up your green hook from S6 handrail 2007. Copy that. Pick up green hook at 2007. And Duke, just checking, I didn't hear the PGT settings. Uh, the PGT is the Bravo 3, clockwise 2, and uh, just working on M14 here. Perfect. Okay, we're expecting approximately four turns on M13 and M14. This is not to torque yet. That'll be four turns. Okay, Duke, now I see you. I got uh, one hand turn on 13 and 14. Moving on to the PGT for three more. Okay, copy. One hand turn on M13 and M14. Three additional turns on M14, that's four total. Okay, Gina, I picked up the uh, green hook and I'm translating. Copy, Koichi. You'll be at the S5, S6 interface following the A-frame Nader, follow handrail 2144, and then on the Nader forward edge, translate to the inboard edge of the 1-alpha IEA. Moving on to uh, upper left to center pad. Copy, Duke. And Duke, those are straps one and two for the left upper. And I'll have PGT settings, new settings when you're ready.
for both of you. Koichi, if you do want to grab the crowfoot tool, that's D-ring hotel in the strut bag, you'll need the ratchet wrench as well. Um, also, Duke, if it would help you to have an extra pair of hands, you can work together on the upper triangle, and then we'll go back to the APFR. Duke, we concur that all of the settings are okay. correct. We just want that pitch knob in the lock position. And if you need the tool, Koichi, I can hand it to you. Okay, let me try it first. Without, without it, and then if it doesn't work, I'll get it. So I, think I got it about halfway there. Okay. So to catch up on the procedures for today, um, Koichi Wakata um, did tighten some of the bolts on the struts on the 1B side. He's going to go over and help Nicole Mann uh, just for a little bit. They're going to split up the tasks on the 1A side. Nicole Mann, uh, call sign Duke, is going to be continue to work on that upper triangle, uh, which is the top section of the full mounting platform that's going to be installed on the 1A mast canister as part of today's spacewalk. In the meantime, Koichi Bukata over on the 1A work site. They're over there together now. Uh, Koichi will work Duke, on the, uh, continue to work on that foot restraint, which uh, Nicole Mann will enter later as part of accessing team. those different parts of the mounting platform. So the two of them are over that on the work, 1A work site now. Well. Copy, additional three, that's four turns total. Thank you. I need a tool. It doesn't go all the way. I'll get a tool, Duke. Yeah, you're going to go with the tool, Kuichi? Yep, I'll get it. Okay. Do you see it? You want to put your head there? Okay. Houston copies. And I got two hand turns on M17 ready for PGT settings. Copy, two hand turns on M17. PGT settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. You'll be going to torque. We're expecting a little over six turns to nine turns. So that'll be about four or five to seven turns additional to the two that you got by hand. And checking as well for black line flush. Okay, this knob is uh, locked on Tango Tango and it's uh, popped out and uh, can be depressed. All right, we see the man. Uh, it was really easy with the tool. <laughs> That's so, awesome. 
Wilson. <laughs> Way to go, Luigi. All right. All right, Koichi, we'll have you stow that okay. foot tool back in the strut bag, and then you can assist Duke with that upper tool. Copy that. The tool is already stowed in the strut bag. I'm going to assist Duke. You are the man. Try it. The Duke is the man. <laughs> we love it. With one more and. Uh, Koichi Wakata able to uh, work with that uh, pesky um, APFR, the portable foot restraint. Now the settings on that portable foot restraint are complete, so he'll join Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, uh, to continue assembling that upper triangle of the uh, mounting platform that they're going to install on the 1A channel. turns, black line flush, and good torque. With that, you can release the ret from the right upper strut. settings and a couple steps to work on. Okay, go ahead with your PT with the PTT settings. Bravo three, clockwise two. 
flush on both of those once you torque them. Okay, copy. The sun rising on the International Space Station as uh, Duke gets those um, pistol grip tool or the cordless power drill settings. That is actually really good. Can we see all the guys you put on here are super helpful. Oh, that's great. So that's good. Yeah. Them working together is making the build of that upper triangle of the mounting platform a little bit easier. They were able to build the handover. We are expecting Flu's communication, um, the just video and audio, very briefly soon. And uh, right as expected. Um, we're losing video and audio, but we'll be regaining it shortly. We get uh, good communication from the tracking and data relay satellites through uh, an operation such as this. The uh, um Though this is a larger gap in communication, so you'll notice a lot of folks in the room taking a bio break. Um, it is uh, the gaps are relatively short through a dynamic operation, but this is one of the longer ones, so it gives the team an opportunity uh, to take a break. Uh, we'll get back to the action pretty soon. While we're waiting to regain communication from the International uh, Space Station, let's go over the, the plan and the work for today. So first of all, uh, what they're doing is they're currently on the 1A channel, the channel that's marked in the yellow there. Um, they are constructing a modification kit uh, for future IROSA solar arrays, International Space Station rollout solar arrays. There are four that are installed in the International Space Station so far. Um, that is all of the channels marked in blue and then the green. Um, the mar mounting hardware, that, that mounting platform was complete, uh, but we saw Koichi Wakata um, tighten some of the bolts on the struts uh, to make sure that that's ready to receive an IROSA later this summer. But the two of them now are over on the 1A channel, and they are working on the modification kit. Now, this is really a modification to the original mass canister. That's that uh, light blue, kind of greenish um, tin can-looking structure. Uh, that had the legacy solar arrays, and they are building that those struts that are um, going to... Uh, house soon the International Space Station rollout solar array on that mounting bracket that you see there in the graphic. So they're building that top portion right now, the upper triangle. Uh, that requires a cordless power drill to secure some of the bolts in place. Um, all of these different components, as you see them now, were transported through a bag. And that bag has been transported over to their work site. Um, you can see some of the upper struts, some of those components. They had to take them out. All of them are marked so they know which pieces are which, uh, and right now they are putting them together to build the upper triangle. This is not the first time we've done it, so we do have graphics from previous spacewalks. You can see there on the right, that is a fully constructed modification kit. That's what it looks like. And then here's a, from a previous spacewalk, two spacewalkers actually installing the rollout solar arrays. Once it's installed, it unfolds just like you see there, and it's called a rollout solar array for a reason. It rolls out and covers uh, the bottom portion of the legacy solar arrays, but it generates an incredible amount of power. And so far, four have been installed and are performing very well. So what they're doing now is they're creating the um, um, modification kit for those an, an, another pair of solar arrays that are going to be delivered to the International Space Station later in the summer. We're now regaining video and audio from the International Space Station, so let's go back to the action uh, where Koichi and Duke are both continuing to work on constructing uh, that modification kit. Yeah, that's 
19 additional turns on M16, green light, 18.3 on the torque, and both bolts are black line flush. Okay, 19 additional turns, green light, 18.3, and both are black line flush. Look, if I hand you this PCT, there's two bolts right in front of you. Okay, copy that. 13 and 14, those are next. Okay. We're checking on one of those bolts before you pass off that PGT. Okay, stand by. by 19 turns with the PGT. Well, maybe it's, I think 18. Copy, Duke, we're checking. Thanks for your patience, guys. We're chatting about M15. Okay, Duke, could we have you just check the alignment tab is fully seated in place? got a great view of that. We concur with everything. If you could do us a favor and just hit M15 one more time with the PGT. Hey, just kidding, Duke. We're actually happy with that bolt. <laughs> great news. So you can release the ret from the left upper strut. The next bolts will be M13 and M14, and PGT settings should be the same. Okay. Bravo 3, clockwise 2. Bravo 3, clockwise 2. 
preset, clock light two set. Perfect. Clock upper is released. Copy Duke. And Koichi, for you, you'll be driving those approximately an additional 20 turns, looking for torque, good okay. green light, and black line flush on both of those. Copy. Can you move the triangle, Koichi? Uh, it's good. And I can lock out that PG, uh, that PG team might be falling on you, too. PG team, yeah, okay. It's, it's fine, but the, could you, uh, tilt towards me? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Does it say in 13, 14? On the side, does it say? It says on the side. Okay, yeah. I see that, okay. All right. Alpha two. Bravo three. Excuse me, Bravo three and uh, Bravo three set, the clockwise two set. Additional 20 turns. You go. A nineteen and a half turns, and uh, I got a green light eighteen point five foot pounds, nineteen point zero three turns. Okay, 19 and a half turns oh, visually, four. green light, 18.5 on the torque. That's good speed, and that was on the M13, I'm going to do M14. Copy M13, and, uh, black line flush. and copy black line flush, going to M14. Okay. Copy, in work. From this view of uh, Duke's helmet camera, we can very clearly see the full build of the upper triangle. Uh, they've put uh, two of the three sections of the triangle together. Now, uh, the two of them working together to install the final part of that with Nicole Mann, Duke, uh, able to hold the one side of the strut. Um, Koichi Wakata has great access to that uh, final part of the upper strut. That's the right side of the uh, upper triangle. and a half turns visually confirmed. I got a green light, 18.3 foot pounds, 18.86 turns. Okay, and copy, block line flash on M14. Got it, 18.5 turns, green light, 18.3 torque, and black line on both M13 and M14. That's a good read. Okay, with that, we are happy with those bolts. You can tend the PGT back to the strut bag. And I think at this point, Duke, will have you go ahead and ingress the APFR. Koichi, we'll have you go ahead and grab the cables at this point. Copy. Copy and work. Big picture for you both. Right now, our limiting consumable is going to be EV1 Medox, right now looking at about 640, 645 PET. 
We're just about 20 minutes down on the timeline right now. You guys are doing good work. Okay. All right, Gracie, I'm all cleaned up. I'm headed over to the ACFR. Okay. The uh, untangle the PGT. All right, so with the upper triangle built, um, Duke has the upper triangle tethered to herself. She'll be able to get into the foot restraint that's already been set up to allow her to access the top part of the mass canister and get ready to install that upper triangle. Uh, in the meantime, um, Koichi Wakata working on the pistol grip tool, making sure that's going to be stowed away. And if you remember, on the way out to the work site, uh, Koichi Wakata had a cable bag in tow and put it off to the side to temporarily stow it. He's going to go ahead and access that cable bag and grab some of the necessary materials needed for continuing uh, to build this um, mounting platform. Next on the timeline is, uh, now that the upper triangle is built, is to uh, build that uh, is to build that right strut, and a correction that the triangle is actually uh, tethered uh, not to um, Duke. Duke, for you, as a reminder, no sudden movements on the mass canister or mod kit. Limit your lateral loads into the BGA, avoid cyclic lighting, loading, and don't impart forces into the mod kit before they're fully installed. And Duke, we also suggest fair leading on S4 handrail 2213. That's the inboard radiator corner of the IEA. Okay, so Zima, I'm going to grab the uh, sun mount for our cable. Copy, Koichi. That's perfect. Yep, you'll be going to the cable bag, grabbing yep. the one Alpha Irosa cables with the adjustable equipment tether and Copy. showing on your BRT. Copy that. Bailey's in place on 2235. Copy, Duke.
Local City Ingress 8. Copy, Duke. Hey, I'm ready to the uh, one alpha cable bundle, and I'm going to take it out from the cable bag. That's perfect, Koichi. You can stow that on your BRT, close the cable bag, and translate to the upper triangle. Hey. See that? So this is a great shot of some of the work that's being done concurrently. You can see uh, EV2 Duke with the suit with no stripes uh, is ingressing or entering the portable foot restraint that was set up for her to access uh, some of the parts that are needed to install that upper triangle, which Koichi Wakata has in tow. Um, he went over to that cable bag that he stowed early on as he made his way out to the work site grabbing some of the cables. So he'll have the upper triangle and the cables in tow. Uh, and once uh, Nicole Mann or Duke is uh, inside the uh, portable foot restraint and in a good configuration, they'll do a handoff. Uh, so he'll be uh, handing off some of the components that she needs to, con to construct the mounting platform one at a time. Uh, and they'll work together to install this mounting platform. Can you uh, see my toes here? What's that? Can you uh, give me a look at my toes? I can see, uh, okay. It yeah, looks like the both sides are in, but the uh, heel, may, I cannot see the heel. Let me go there. Okay? Okay. I don't think my heels are in. I just want to make sure my toes are in the right. Yeah, both are, yeah, left side is in, and the right side is, uh, yeah, you are in the, in the loop. Okay. You need to put the heel down a little more. Go down on the heel on the right side. I feel like my right's not in the toe loop, is it? Not, not, not in. So push it in, right, further, close your, yeah, further in, keep going. Yeah, you're touching the loop. You can put your uh, heel down, both left okay. and right. Yeah. Copy. Let me just yeah. get reset back up here. Yeah. Koichi uh, Wakata has a great view. Um, he's aiding um, Nicole Mann and guiding her. He's got a better view of where her feet will go inside the portable foot restraint. Uh, behind them, you can see uh, the earth, the high-definition views from the HECA camera are providing these beautiful views of the southern Atlantic Ocean. Uh, they just passed over the eastern border of South America and are heading on a northeastern track towards Africa, but they're over the South uh, Atlantic Ocean right now. And a correction that that upper triangle is a, specifically attached to the um, to the strut bag, uh, it, to the bag where those uh, the upper triangle components actually came from. Um, but it will be Koichi Wakata that will grab it and hand it off to um, Nicole Mann once she's in position. Okay, 
Let's see, my right one, I feel like my right one's in. Yeah, looks like it. Okay. Left one, I think I need to heal a little more. Yeah. A little more heel down. Position is good. You can get a great view. They, um, the cameras here from the yeah, outside yeah, of the International yeah, Space yeah. Station are zoomed yeah. in on the portable foot right, restraint. Left heel to the outboard. Heel down. Yeah, looks like it's almost in. On the right, Koichi Wakata guiding. Uh, Duke through the process of getting ingressed or okay, fully yeah, um, integrated okay. into that portable yeah, foot restraint. Stay there, stay there. Uh, right side the uh, heel, you come out to the left. Uh, heel to your left. Right to your left, or heel only to your left. So, which foot? Right foot. Heel, yeah. And then Heel down. Uh, okay, and then stop. Stop. Uh, go to the left. Uh, right heel to your left side. That's good. And stay there. And then, and then you're in. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sure. <laughs> Looking good. Great work, guys. That was awesome coordination. Right, Copy ingress. Ed Duke. All right. So I'm going to attach the cable bundle to the uh, triangle. Okay. That's correct, Koichi. You'll be attaching the free hook of that adjustable that's on the mounting bracket already to the D-ring on the adjustable going to the cable bundle. You can see the cable bundle is attached to the adjustable that is going around uh, on the mountain bracket. Copy, Koichi. All right, if that looks like it's tidy enough to not get in Duke's way, we're happy with that config, and you can pass up the upper triangle. Um, if needed, you can also use those wire ties that are already installed on the cables to kind of tend it to the mounting bracket. Okay, what do you think, Duke? Okay. It's just got to come up and then go in. Okay, copy. Let me reconfigure my DRT and then I'll be with you. Thank <laughs> you. 
way uh, I'm coming from your right. Can you see the triangle? I see Let me know when you can grab any part. So I think maybe if you bring it back towards me a little bit. Okay, you have a control. You have to rotate it. Good words, Koichi. We see you looking good. Just a reminder, we don't need to ret swap for this one. We've got two rets in series. Copy. So right now, uh, Koichi Wakata, you see in the suit with red stripes. He just handed off the uh, upper triangle to... Duke, if it's easier, you can lean back to do that rolling motion, or you can also have Koichi take control back. Let me, yeah, let me get... Uh, uh, could you stay there? Looks like uh, this uh, table is... Okay, okay, so I think I can rotate it, okay. but um, just let me know when it's cool. Okay, stand by. Stay there. Yeah, so Duke has control of that upper triangle. Koichi just guiding her as she needs to rotate it into position that's appropriate for installing it on the mast canister. Just keep an eye on those cables and make sure that they don't get in the way or get snagged as Duke is trying to install the upper triangle. Okay, copy that. I'll keep an eye on it and then end it here. Next steps for you after that, Koichi, would be to move the silver PGT from the strut bag to the whip X. Copy. And then you'd be doing a socket swap on your red PGT. Uh, transfer the uh, uh, silver PGT already that we fixed under. Okay, copy. The silver PGT is moved and making sure that no. you have the. Oh, no, not yet. Oh, copy. Not yet. Uh, not yet, uh, Zena. Okay. I'm going to move it now. Perfect. Gotcha. Nice work, Duke. If you need to lean back at all to get enough clearance for that maneuver, I know you're working in a tight workspace there. All right. Whew, got it. Awesome, Duke. Great job. And Koichi, for that PGT, just a reminder to move the bag ret with the PGT. You'll be using that ret for the WIFX handrail. Nice work. Okay, now the silver PGT is attached. For you, Koichi, you'll be doing a socket swap on your red PGT. Swap to the six inch wobble that's in your trash bag now. We'll take a good pull test. See that? Good work. 
And Duke, looks like you're in a good mistake. You'll make sure that that arrow is pointing up, and then install the center pad on okay, the canister with the left side first, then press in on the right side to engage the soft dock. Okay, arrows up, left side right in. It's on the right, but I don't think it went all the way in. Copy. Great work. I'll have PGT settings for you next. Let me know when you're ready. So with a little bit of uh, finagling and getting the upper triangle into the right rotation, Duke has successfully soft docked it to the upper part of the mast canister. Uh, that's the po point where the upper triangle is to be installed. So the next steps will be to use that uh, hand okay, drill, the po cordless ready. power drill, to secure it in place with a few bolts. These PTC settings are alpha 2, clockwise 2. You'll be driving M5, 6, 7, and 8, approximately two turns each, any order. Copy, two turns each. Okay, Dina, uh, tether stop is complete, 716, 6-inch swabble is on my red PGT. Good pull test. Copy. Installed with a good pull test on your PGT. Dina, okay, I have two turns on M5 uh, through. Okay, copy. Two turns on M5, 6, 7, and 8. You'll now be going to torque on each of these in any order, an additional three to eight turns or so. Koichi, we're a little down on the timeline still today. Now is when we had planned to install the MUT with GoPro. Uh, we'll leave it up to you, okay. but it might be the kind of thing that you would want to defer or do without. Up to you. Great. I concur. What do you think, Duke? Uh, M5, five turns, uh, green light, 3.6 uh, on the torque. Copy additional five turns on um, M5, 3.6 on the torque. Yeah, I've got three bolts left here, Kaliki, and then I'll be ready for the, the left mid strut. So I'll leave that up to you, okay. based on where you're at. Okay, uh, if I have a few minutes, uh, Dina, then I will install it. Not the end of factor. That sounds great, Kaliki. Is there anything that I can do? Okay, okay. Let's do that. Four turns, green light, 3.8 on the torque, M8. Copy, four turns, 3.8, green light on M8. Four and a half turns, green light, 3.9 on the torque, M6. Copy, four and a half, 3.9, Green light on M6. And Koichi, for you, we do think you have time. Totally up to you, no pressure. You'd be, per the plan, installing that MUT end effector on handrail 2214. That's the inboard edge middle handrail. Okay, copy that. It works. Green light, 3.7 torque, M7. Copy.
Copy. Four additional turns, 3.7, green light on M7. Okay, Duke, those are good bolts, all four of them. You can release the mounting bracket RET. And next, you'll check that the center pad MOI and pit pins are still installed. Okay, MOI and pit pins, look good. Copy, that's great. You can rotate the upper triangle down for later access after you have the RET released. And then from both of you, we'll take a good glove half and gauntlet check. Okay, uh, left the good and the half is baseline. Okay, half is baseline, glove are good, gauntlets are covered. Gauntlets are covered for you be on two. Copy you both. With that, the uh, upper triangle uh, has been installed onto the 1A mast canister. Picture for me, I think I'm um, popping out and adjusting the uh, APFR. Big picture. I think I'm going to need to pop yes. out to get to uh, RET on the mounting bracket. Okay, copy. Yeah, that's what we're waiting on is just that uh, mounting bracket RET. I think I'll get that right after I get maybe the APFR rolled over or once I pop out. You got it. It's on the far right edge. Yeah, we're happy with that plan, Duke. With that, you can egress the APFR. You'll be also socket swapping to the two-inch rigid that's in your trash bag with a good pull test and then adjusting the WIPEX. So the upper triangle is installed. You'll hear the periodic uh, glove and hap checks. There's the glove just to make sure there are no nicks or scrapes and make sure they're in good quality to continue working on the spacewalk. And then the hap is the helmet absorption pad, just a quick field test to see if there's any uh, liquid or water. Uh, everything looks good. So we'll hear those checks periodically. That red is a retractable tether. That's the one that was anchoring the um, upper triangle to the strut bag. So uh, Duke has to release that and then they can move on to the next task. She's going to be um, exiting the foot restraint here shortly. Now go for it. She's told and I'm back in the work site. Okay, copy and just confirm the jaws are out on that end effector. Yes, uh, it's locked and then I see, uh, yeah, uh, jaws are out and it's locked. Copy, that sounds like a good config, Koichi. All right. So Duke is egressing the APFR, and then we'll have you work together on the APFR and WIFX reconfig. Copy that. So if APFR is so happy that I got ingress, it does not want to let me go. We copy that, Duke. And Koichi, once you get over there, you can uh, help her if that is useful. Okay. Looks like you need to Copy. just rotate your heels a little further in. I know that's tricky with just an ingress aid. Copy that. Uh -oh. Okay, I'm uh, coming up uh, to the APFR now, Duke. Okay, thank you. Sure. I see the uh, tether coming from the... Yeah, there's still that right there on the morning. On the... Right, I see that. 
Okay. And your smoke will hear. So I'm going to go with my right heel in if you'll maybe give it a kick. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, okay, right heel. So right now, Koichi Wakata is helping uh, Nicole Mann, Colson Duke to egress or get out of the foot restraint. Um, that foot restraint was configured such that it gave her just the right angle to um, install that upper triangle. It was the right angle for her to use that cordless power drill, the PGT, pistol grip tool, and then drive those bolts. Uh, she needs to get out. They're going to reconfigure it, uh, angle it a different way, so now, and then she'll get back in it. Uh, so she'll be able to access the next set of bolts uh, for when they install that next component of the mounting platform, which is the right strut. Uh, so they'll work through that methodically, getting her out, re-angling it back in, and then they'll get the new uh, component of the mounting bracket from the strut bag, uh, hand it off, and then bolt that uh, to the mass canister. Okay, now you can pull out. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay. So we're in another handover period. Again, we're receiving video and audio from the geosynchronous uh, TDRS satellites tracking and data relay satellites. Um, another in intermittent gap, we'll be regaining video and audio here shortly. Uh, as a quick recap, the two have completed the installation of the upper triangle on the 1A power channel. Um, there are several components that make up the uh, mounting bracket, so that's done. Uh, and they're currently trying to reposition the foot restraint uh, to get a new angle uh, and allow Nicole Mann, Colsign Duke, uh, to access the next part of the installation, which is the bolts okay, that will attach okay, the uh, right strut to the upper triangle. Houston's back with you after a quick handover. And Koichi. That sounds like a good plan. We've got you adjusting the APFR, but if you want to coordinate who does APFR, who does WIFX, that's fine by me. Okay. I'm doing the uh, WIFX extender, and uh, Duke will do the uh, APFR. Okay, I'm going to work on the socket swap right now. That's okay. Good. Copy working on the socket swap for you, Duke. And big picture update for you both. Right now we're looking at about 30 minutes down on the timeline. Our limiting consumable is still EV1 Medox, but moved up to about six hours, 50 minutes. And we'd love your input on just how you're doing and how you feel about that big picture update. How are you feeling, Duke? Uh, feeling good. Yeah, okay. Continue. Great work. You guys are doing awesome so far. Keep it up. Awesome. A good read from the crew. You heard they're a little bit behind on the timeline, but still making good progress to get this um, mounting bracket installed. Both of them are taking two different parts of the uh, foot restraint right now to configure it for that next setting. Scotty with X adjusted to extension of one. That's perfect. And I'll have APFR settings. Um, you're ready. It's going to be gonna... a roll to the right. That's correct. Yeah, we'll be adjusting both the roll and the pitch going to Papa Papa Charlie. First, I'm gonna, is it okay, uh, Duke, to change the uh, roll? Yeah, let me know if I'm pulling on you. I can. Uh... No, 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 you're not pulling, so. Oh, that's a yo.
you can certainly grab Lucas's Pro Quick Tool if you need it. All right. I need it. Copy, good pull test. Copy, do good pull test on the two inch. And Luigi, you will need to push that uh, pitch knob in before you'll be able to ratchet. Copy that. Great teamwork, guys, and just a reminder to watch out for each other's hands. There are a lot of the, a lot of pinch points in there. Oh, okay, uh, I was able to unlock it. Nice work, Luigi. Now it's completely unlocked. Okay. I can push down here. You may have to hold okay. on to the handrail. Okay, you can push down if you can. Yeah, please. Yeah. It's in the unlocked position. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty tight before. Let me see if I can come down lower. Okay. Um. You can also try using the boot to get some more leverage. Maybe if you hold on to this level, I'll let go. You can try using the boot plate to get a little bit more of a lever arm there. Yeah. Just doesn't move. 
Maybe I'll roll the boot plate back up so that we can use it. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Could you roll it back? Yeah. Okay. Box shot position. for leverage, and just a reminder to avoid using the glove for a pounding motion like that.
It's still in R. It's over it. Yeah, it's all the way to R. All right. Two more notches. Now, one more notch. Great work, guys. And as long as you can get it to at least Sierra, Sierra, we can give you some alternate settings. Okay. Yeah, pop, 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 pop. yeah, I think maybe just one time to get more. You can pop, 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 right? It's just a little high. Just a, a small amount more. But you can get it Copy. Locked. Great work, guys. Try. Right mid is released. Once Duke has ingressed, you'll be passing that off to her and then getting the right lower strut from strap seven and eight. Copy. Copy that. 
So a quick recap, uh, it did take a little bit of work, but the duo did get the uh, portable foot restraint to the angle it needs to be to install that next section, the uh, right strut. So Koichi Wakata is going to get that and uh, hand it off to Nicole Mann once she gets uh, back into the foot restraint and at the right angle to access the bolts that she'll need to drive uh, to install that right strut. And guys, feel free to just stay together okay. there by the APFR, make sure that we get in a good config. And a reminder also, we've got that RET attached to the upper triangle still. Yeah, I can get to that right now. Yeah.
feel to your right a little bit. Okay, give me one sec. Let me get my right in the toilet. Okay. in a good position for head off. Okay, I'm ready for it. It's shut. And you'll be passing the clevis end toward EV2. Okay. Okay. So, Dina, that's from the strap 8 and 7, correct? A firm strap 7 and 8.
And then, Duke, you'll want to ret to the handrail stanchion that's nearest the clevis. Duke, uh, Clevis side is uh, on the not sure. Okay. Okay, that's on your right. Can you see it? Okay, I see it. All controls? Okay, you have the controls. Here. If you have a red on the right lower, lower right, you can release your red. Okay. That's the back red is just a moment and I mean You need me to move it down? No, it's good, but stay stay there. It's okay. good. It's released. You have the controls? I have the controls. Okay. Great. Hey. Great work, guys. Okay. See, now I'm going to translate to the... Uh... Okay. Yeah, Koichi, that's right. You'll be translating to the right sob spherical bearing on the mass canister right side and just report to us the spherical bearing alignment. Then you'll be grabbing the silver PGT from that WIFX handrail. Copy. Copy that. Duke, once Koichi gets down there, you'll be helping out with the lower strut alignment, and you'll work together to install. Okay, bearing our alignment looks good. Koichi, you can grab the silver PGT. Uh, and it looks good. Both of you, just a big picture update here. Right now, we're looking at probably between 45 minutes and an hour down on the timeline, just thanks to that sticky pitch on the APFR. Um, so right now, we are thinking that the get-aheads, the S6 DDCU jumper, and one Bravo cable routing are going to be saved for a future EVA, but we're still in good shape. Just keep doing what you're doing. You guys are doing great work. Okay, I have the silver PGT, and then I'm gonna I'm ready to install the uh, 
Barry. All right. In 19. I've got some PGT settings for you, Koichi. That's going to be Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. Okay, Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. So right now, right now, Koichi Wakata and uh, Nicole Mann working at the two ends of the lower strut. This uh, attaches the top of the mounting bracket, which is part of that upper triangle that they built earlier, and the strut uh, anchors it to the lower part of the mast canister, and this is on the right side. So Koichi Wakata, because he's not in the foot restraint, will have access to that bottom part, and he'll use his pistol grip tool to anchor it to the bottom part of the mast canister, uh, while uh, Nicole Mann, Duke, um, with, who is still in the uh, portable foot restraint, has access uh, to the top portion of this lower strut, which is being attached to the front end of that mounting bracket. Okay, Koichi. Tracking Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. Okay. Now, with Duke's help, you'll be aligning the lower strut. And we're just looking to start with four turns on M19. Copy that. Let me uh, put a BRT down here, and then I'll work on four turns. Copy. That's great. And if you get any uh, hand turns on that bolt, just let us know. And a reminder, while you're down there, to watch your fingers. There's a pinch okay. point there between the uh, lower strut pad to the BGA. Okay, copy that. Okay, Duke, I'm ready to uh, receive it. Okay, I'm going to keep holding on this end. You just let me know what you need to get it lined up. Okay. All right, that's good. Okay. Hand over here, okay, guys. can you move up uh, to your right a little bit, to your right? We're in a short uh, handover period right now, so we still have audio from the International Space Station. We can hear the crew, but we'll be getting video back shortly. Keep coming down. To your right. Down. Excuse me. And stay there, stay there. Okay. Great. Feel free to hand start that, Koichi. We'll be back in a couple seconds. Here. We're back with you after a handover, and any turns that you put on that M19 oh. bolt, let us know. Okay, that's uh, four turns on the PCT. Copy, four turns on M19, great work. New PGT settings for you, Koichi, Bravo 7, Clockwise 2. And Duke, now that M19 is started. Bravo 7, Clockwise 2. Good read back. Duke, you can start M20. That's the right lower strut L6 to the mounting bracket. 
check that the PIP pin lanyard is free of the clevis, and I'll have PGT settings for you when you're ready. Okay. Bravo 7 set, then clockwise to set for M19. Copy, Koichi. You'll be. Could you tell me the count? Uh, so stand by until Duke has her end started, but you will be going to torque on this one. Copy. We're expecting 10 and a half to 11 turns once Duke's end is started. Copy. The is clear. I've got one turn hand started. Copy, one turn okay. hand started. I've got my PGT taking me. Your PGT settings, Duke, are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. And this will be about one extra turn on M20. Extra Just one extra. We're looking for about two total here. Just for two total. Okay, sorry, I should have done that with my hand, but yeah, that's my bad. I could have helped you. Yeah, uh, Dina, do I have a do I have a go to turn uh, in 19, 10.5 to 11 turns? Once you get one more, one more turn, I got a Bravo one clockwise two set. Copy. Here's a good shot uh, of the two astronauts working on both ends of that lower right strut. So you see Nicole Mann is in the foot restraint. She's got access to the top part of the lower strut. That's towards the uh, upper triangle. Uh, she's got a pistol grip tool to uh, secure that to the top portion. And then um, Koichi Wakata at the bottom portion, securing the lower strut to the base of the mast canister. Copy, one additional turn, Copy. two turns total on M20. With that, Koichi, you can drive M19 to torque, expecting 10.5 to 11 additional turns, looking for green light and torque readings. Copy that, team work. 10.5 to 11 turns on M19. Good read back. And Duke, once you've got your PGT stowed, we can have you start on the one alpha right IROSA cable routing. Cool. Okay, uh, Vina, on M19, I got a green light that talked out the 25.9 foot pounds in the high turns. And the block line flush, I, uh, I see a little bit of a gap. It's almost there, but uh, yeah, I would say the block line flush. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it on the hacker. Koichi, we are expecting to finish this off with the torque wrench, but we copied green light 25.9 right. torque. And was that 10 turns? That's a nine turns. Copy, nine turns. 8.66 six turns, John. Right. The visual lead was nine turns. Copy that. All right. With that, Koichi, you can grab the torque wrench from the right lower strut, and you'll socket swap to the two-inch rigid from the PGT to the torque wrench with a good pull test. Copy. Duke, for you, you'll remove the short wire tie, securing the one alpha right IROSA cables to the mounting bracket and stow them in your trash bag if they were used. And then you'll release the long wire okay, tie on the them. cables. Copy. Just one twist on the one alpha right side wire tie.
So from this uh, helmet camera view, we're looking from the vantage point of Duke, or uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. You can see Koichi Wakata working on the base of the lower strut, Nicole Mann working on the, on the cables. Of course, the strut is really a support structure that allows the uh, IROSA, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, to be installed, but it does need to provide power, ultimately, to the International Space Station, so these cables uh, will be uh, positioned accordingly, uh, so that when the IROSA is installed on the mounting bracket, that uh, they'll be able to basically hook it up to the International Space Station and the power that will be drawn from the new solar arrays uh, can be sent to all of the appropriate downstream places uh, uh, on the International Space Station. So they're positioning those cables now so when they later uh, install the IROSAs, right now we're looking at uh, this summer to get the IROSAs up to the space station and installed, uh, that they'll be able to hook it up. 15 turns with this torque wrench until you break over two times. 14 to 15 turns, okay. Copy. Okay, three twists complete. Copy, Duke. That looks really good. You'll next be driving M20 to torque after Koichi finishes his M19 end. Can I put the ground reset pin in? Checking. And I apologize, Koichi. We actually need 14 to 15 total turns, so you only have about another turn and a half to go. Much better news. That's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a great release. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was about to be tough times. And Duke, you can install that grounding fit pin into the mounting bracket. Okay, I uh, felt the two breakovers and visually confirmed two breakovers on M19. Great work, Luigi. Next, we'll take a check that the black line is parallel to the cylinder and flush. There's no gap between the strut boss and bearing. And there's no movement with a wheel fence. Okay, black light is black line flush and power to the cylinder. So there's no uh, gap between the uh, shut box and the circle bearing. Copy. And Koichi, just to confirm, how many additional turns was that with the torque wrench? It was uh, less than half turn, uh, around quarter, quarter turn. Copy. Additional quarter turn. I would say uh, v uh between quarter and a half turn. Okay, copy, Koichi. We'll be uh, checking that real quick. It's a little less than we were expecting. Okay, good news. We're good with that bolt, Koichi, and we'll take that one last wiggle test there. Perfect. With that, you can socket swap to the two-inch rigid from your torque wrench back to the silver PGT with a good pull test. And you can relocate the torque wrench to the silver PGT. You'll keep that ret from the strut with the torque wrench. See, it works. Duke, 
once you have that PIP pin installed, you can go back and drive M20 to torque. We're expecting five to seven additional turns looking for black line flush. Copy, PIP pins installed. Drive an M20. Copy. Copy, six turns, 11.9 on the torque, green light, check black line flush. Black line flush. Copy, do you can... Okay, copy, to the silver PGT complete. Okay, copy, Koichi, check the lower strut MLI is covering the strut pad. Duke, you can stow your PGT. Area. Copy. On the pad. Great work, Weechi. You can translate gonna... to the side pad location on the right side there. Okay. Uh, before that, I will attach the uh, torque wrench to the silver PGT. Good words. Am I working any MLI right now or not until the mid trip done? Once you stow your PGT, you can release the ret from the lower strut, and then with that grounding pit pin installed, okay. you can install the MLI over the lower strut clevis. And after that, you'll be working on the right mid strut. Koichi, you may also want to tend that PGT over to the other side so you can easily reach it once you get over there. Going, Duke. Good, I'm just getting the demo I uh tied up here. Okay, great. Okay. Torque is uh to the silver PGT and I'm gonna translate to the other side. Copy that. And Duke for you also just make sure that the ret has been released from the lower strut. Ret is released from the lower strut. Copy, thanks. For those following along, the duo are now wrapping up after uh, successfully uh, driving the bolts to install the lower right strut. Um, so they're just doing some cleanup work right now and just um, making sure the multi-layer insulation is covering uh, the parts that they were working on. And they're going to now grab the next um, component for installation, which is the middle strut. Here's a graphic. Uh, you can see the lower strut on the right of this graphic. That's the one they just installed. The mid strut goes really to the middle of the uh, mast canister that's coming up next. You'll be getting in place to install the side pad on that mast canister. And Koichi, once you're in place, I can preemptively give you some PGT settings for those bolts. Okay. Okay, MLI is on M20, and I'm going to get the uh, mixture. Great work, Duke. So, uh, 
then I can translate on this uh, uh, amateur long handrail that way to go up to the mid strut area. Hey, from Koichi. When you're ready for me to process. Okay, so I'm going to get you some uh, DRT here. Yep, once Squeechee is in a good position to receive, Duke, you will pass that mid strut with the side pad toward Squeechee. Hey, thank you for waiting. And I am. Um, receive it now. Okay. Just because of your safety centers. Um, okay, I see you. Okay. It's uh, just uh, running on your right. And I uh, watch again. Okay. All right. Keep coming. Okay. Keep coming. Nice work, guys. Koichi, as you receive okay. it, just check that the arrow is pointing up, and you'll ultimately be engaging the left side first, and then pressing in on the right side. Okay, that arrow is up, and engaging left side first, and then right side is in. Great job. When you're ready, I'll have PGT settings for you, and we're coming up on a quick handover in about two minutes. So I'll keep you posted. Okay. I'm ready to copy the PGT settings. Koichi Alpha 2, clockwise 2. Okay, Alpha 2, clockwise 2. And Duke, I will also have PGT settings for you once you're ready. No problem. Your uh, next steps once Koichi has. Yeah, exactly. You'll be waiting on him to start two turns on M9 <laughs> through M12, but then you will go to torque on M24. Okay, copy. Okay, Alpha 2 is set. The clockwise 2 is set for M19 to 12. Two turns. Those are good words, Koichi. You can go ahead and start. Okay, starting in 9. M9. Copy two on M9. This is the helmet camera view of Koichi Wakata. He's on the mass canister. Can you see that? Say again. Uh, Duke, can you see that?
Now in another uh, handover of some of the video we're receiving from Orbit. Uh, as a refresher, we're currently installing the mid strut on the right side for this mounting platform. Koichi Wakata was working on the mass canister side, so if you see the side pad on the right from this graphic, he's working on uh, driving the bolts on that side. Um, Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, is still in the uh, portable foot restraint. She's on the right side, so she'll be soon driving the bolts over there to attach the mid strut to the mounting platform. BRT, go ahead and do that, and then we can have Duke put two turns on her end and come help you with the BRT. Okay, sounds good. I will just continue with the two turns, and uh, after that we'll get to Duke for the uh, BRT. I'm working on end pan for two turns. Two turns on end pan. Copy, two on M10. M11. Quichi. Working on M12. Returns on M12 complete. Okay, copy Kuichi. With that, Duke, you can go ahead and put a couple turns on your end. And actually, Duke, let's just have you go to torque as planned. So your PGT settings are going to be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay, I have one turn by hand for the PGT. With that being, can I translate to uh, Duke for BRT 6? Stand by, Koichi. 
If you can, let's have you go to Twitch since this is an alpha setting on your PGT. So we're expecting an additional. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, more than three additional turns on these, expecting five to ten turns total on M9, 10, uh, 11, and 12. Okay, copy that. Bravo, one, clockwise two. Copy Duke, you'll be going about six and a half to nine turns on M24, looking for black line flush. So once again, the two astronauts working in tandem. And big Duke on the boys. left working side, you see her uh, driving the bolts towards the bracket, and then back together. So we want to just run the procedure, and then we'll have Koichi come to Duke in order to work together for his BRT. Copy that. Copy seven and a half turns, green light, eleven point eight on the torque. Copy, seven and a half turns, 11.8 on the torque, green light, looking for black line flush. Um, yes, black line flush. Copy, Duke, you can stow your PGT and install the mid strut pit pin into the grounding block on the mounting bracket. Vina, let me know when I can uh, talk M9 through 12. Yeah, affirm your go to do that, Koichi, M9 through M12. Okay. Okay, that's uh, Alpha 2, clockwise 2. And uh, did you say uh, how many turns? Good settings, and it'll be more than three additional turns. We're looking for five to ten total going to torque. I'll do that. Work. Perfect. You can install the MLI over M13 and M14. Check that the mounting bracket upper surface is clear. After that, we'll take a glove hap and gauntlet check. Okay, the line uh, four turns complete. I got a green light, and the torque is 3.6. Copy. Four additional turns, green light, 3.6 on the torque for M9. Read. Working on M10. I'm going to have to get that MLI when I do the uh, mid-strut MLI. It's just outside of my reach here. Copy, Duke. No problem. We'll take a glove hat and gauntlet check. Copy. And then uh, five turns complete. 3.8. Good pounds. Copy. Five turns. 3.8 foot-pounds. Green light. And which bolt was that, Koichi? M10. Copy, M10, thank you. Okay. Working on the M11 now. Do you have the baseline gloves? Look good, gauntlets are covered. Copy, Duke, thanks. M11, five and a half turns complete, 2.6 foot out. 
I got a green light. Copy, five and a half additional, green light, 3.6 on M11. Working on M12. Duke, next steps for you will be to... Addition of four turns complete. Copy four turns. Addition four turns complete on M12, 3.6, sit down. Copy. I got a green light. Copy four turns, green light, 3.6 on M12. And for Duke, you can egress the APFR, and then we'll have you work to roll the APFR. I think I'm, I need to get the uh, rep. Off of uh, the mid. Checking, Duke. Might be a few reps. Yeah, Duke, if you can reach that, uh, you can release the RET from that one, but we're assuming you're probably not going to be able to reach it, so that'll be a step for Koichi once he does his PGT, which, Koichi, you can do now. Okay, uh, say again, uh, Koichi, you can stow your PGT um, and next release the RET, Duke's RET, from the mid-strut. Okay, copy that. PGT stowed. Okay, I'm going to release this on Duke. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here you go. Okay, I got it. Okay, it's released. So with that, that uh, completes driving the bolts on the mid strut on the right side. Now the two will work to um, work make sure the, the multi-layer insulation, that white cover, there. is secured. Um, Duke has the go-ahead to get out of the foot restraint and start working on re-angling it so they can work on the left side. They're going to do the same thing. So they're going to start with the lower strut um, that goes to the base of the mass canister and then complete the mid strut. They'll just do the same thing really on the opposite side of the mass canister. But they're just wrapping up the work on the mid strut as we speak. With that, we'll take a glove half and gauntlet check from you. Hey, uh... Good and happy space Copy, and I see your gauntlets are down. And Duke, big picture, down. when you're ready to egress that APFR, we'll have you roll to access the left side. Okay, I'm egress, and I'll, I'm going to adjust the roll now. Perfect. This is going to be roll of hotel. Can I go back to the strut bag? A firm, Koichi, and take your BRT with you. Okay. See that. Please, if you come down, your, uh, your safety feather, I think, might be tangled on my leg, so we need to take a look at that. Okay, let me check that. If I come down, I will take a look. Okay. Oh, no, it's a spot there. You're good. Looks like okay. it's clear. Nice work. Thank you. 
for your ear essay. We've got a really good camera view here. Those cables were snagging on the ingress aid, but it looks like it's clear now. Great, thank you. Oh, the cable that falls definitely. Okay, enter firm, I'm going to hotel. Hey firm, hotel. Okay, hotel is set. Copy, and I think now is a good time to work on the BRT. Sounds good. So, uh, let me local here. Okay, can we keep at the disposition there? Yeah, can you? Yep, is it good? Yep. Gracie, can you put your hands, I go, this hand out so I can hold on to it? And hey, guys, before you fully install that BRT, we've got the D-ring extender going through the loop of the BRT, so just make sure that that's clear. Um, and I think it'll be easy to clean once he releases the BRT from his... Uh, totally, that's a good plan. Any workstation. Yep, yeah. that's great. from what you said, Duke? happy with that uh, yeah. and yeah now might be a good time okay. to just get the BRT on the correct side of the D-ring center. straps 9 and 10. Koichi, you'll pass that left mid strap to Duke.
And guys, big picture, uh, we've got a small win in that the Medox limiting reagent is continuing to look better and better, so we're looking at about a PET of seven hours now as our limiting consumable. We're still about 45 minutes to an hour down on the timeline, so no changes there since the last update. Copy that. So right back side to you. This is the, I need the, um, yeah, this is the right one. Okay, let me, uh, Larry, let me get back over. Periodically throughout the spacewalk, you'll hear reports of limiting consumables. Of course, the spacesuits have uh, the portable life support, so it's all contained within the spacesuit, and they measure these limiting consumables. That, that Medox that's referred to is the carbon scrubbing capability. Uh, every time the crew members exhale, there is a system that is currently pulling that carbon dioxide from the environment inside the suit. It's trending in a good direction, which means that if needed, the crew members can use a little extra time at the back end of this spacewalk up to seven hours total uh, for the duration of the spacewalk if needed. Affirm, left lower from strap five uh, yeah, and six, okay. um, and then Duke, you can ingress the APFR uh, once that's stowed on your uh, BRT. We see the strut is still right above your head here. Okay. Let me get it out of your way. Okay. Copy you both, and of course, feel free to use some teamwork for APFR ingress. Koichi, you can leave that partially stowed in the strut bag if that helps tend it while Duke gets in the APFR. Okay, copy that. Are you ready to ingress? Let's see, hold on, so I'm just getting this on my BRT here. Okay. Okay, I'm on my BRT. All right, uh, look. Let me go through that. Yeah, when you're about to ingress, I'll go there. Okay, looks good. 
a little bit to your right. We're getting a great view from the high-definition helmet camera of Koichi Wakata, who's guiding uh, his spacewalking crewmate Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, through the ingress process of the APFR, the um, portable foot restraint. And so we're seeing up close how the heels actually ingress into the uh, portable foot restraint for it to, to lock uh, the astronaut into place uh, so that they can access the work site. Teamwork, guys, looking really good. Okay, now I'm gonna hand, hand you the left strut. Okay. go back to that strut there. That's perfect, Koichi. You'll be back in that strut. Should you? with the club end toward her. Copy. And Duke, you'll pop that ingress aid, and then you'll be reading to the handrail nearest the clevis. that handoff. We're really just repeating the process that we saw on the uh, other side. Yeah, I'm ready to it. You can on the right down. side, we're repeating okay, the we're same down. process on the left. So lower strut okay, first um, and secure it with bolts to the mounting bracket that you see from the view of Duke's helmet camera and then from Koichi's he'll, he'll install 
the lower bracket on the base of the mass canister. So that'll be the first steps. Same thing we saw on the right side we're doing on the left. You can translate to the left stop spherical bearing. Copy that. And Koichi, you'll be going outboard and then across the IEA via the PVR GF handrails. And we recommend fair leading to keep your tether off of the BGA. Understand the long translation there. Okay. Duke, I can give you PGT settings for when you are eventually driving the M22 bolt. Okay, go ahead. That'll be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Yeah, that's ex exactly right. So he'll start his, okay. you'll do two turns, wait for him to torque, and then you can torque. Okay. Okay, I'm here. I'm going to lead here. Great work, Koichi. When you get there, we'll be looking for the left sob spherical bearing alignment. Copy that. And Duke, just to start thinking about it, in between those first two turns that you put on M22, and then while you're waiting for Koichi's bolt to be torqued, you can start the left side ERISA cable routing.
the duo are continuing to work on those that lower left strut. You can see uh, Duke in place, ingressed into the foot restraint, ready to go as soon as Koichi Wakata gets into place. We're now entering a uh, handover, so we're losing communications temporarily, and we will regain it soon. We're also entering into an orbital nighttime, so you saw sort of the, the lighting change just a bit. Um, Depending on the length of this handover, we might come back into an orbital nighttime, in which case uh, we'll have the external lights on the outside of the space station being illuminating their work site, and then, of course, the helmet cameras on the, or the helmets on the spacesuits themselves have lighting that allow um, the duo to continue their work installing these struts. Um, there are no lighting or thermal constraints when it comes to the installation process. Sometimes uh, astronauts have to pause uh, during various lighting and thermal conditions um, depending on the work that they're doing, but um, we'll see Duke and Koichi together continuing the process nonstop um, through their installing this mod kit. Copy that, Koichi, just to confirm the soft spherical bearing had a good alignment. Uh, spherical bearing has good alignment. Perfect. And for that M21 end, you can hand start that, or I can give you PGT settings with the silver PGT from the WIFX handrail. Could you give me the PGT settings? You bet. That'll be Alpha 1, Clockwise 1. I'm looking for approximately four turns. Oh. Okay, Alpha 1, Clockwise 1, four turns. Good read back. Let me position myself in the spot. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, keep coming down. Stay there. Okay, can you bring it closer to the uh, I know if they need a different alignment. It's a good uh, It's a good alignment, so. Could you come to your left a little bit? Okay, okay that's good. Okay. 
Okay, uh, full turn complete. Okay, I'm going to get a couple turns here. Okay. Copy, four turns complete, and that's right, Duke. You can start okay, M22. Okay, uh, M21, four turns complete. Copy that, Koichi. And Duke, before you start M22, just make sure the pit pin lanyard is free of the clevis. Then you can hand start or PGT. You're just starting with two turns. Get my right part out for reacher. Okay. I'm ready for the setting after the Duke starts. All right, this is clear. I'm working on the on getting the bolt started. Okay. Copy both of you. Koichi, it'll be Bravo 7, clockwise 2, but as you know, we are waiting for M21 to be driven two turns before you can start. Copy that. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Copy, Bravo 1, clockwise 2 set, and two turns on M22. So with that, Koichi, you can drive M21 to torque. This will be an additional 10.5 to 11 turns. I have not turns. done any turns. I have not done the turns yet. Copy, Duke. Thank you. Okay. Stand by, Koichi. Stand by, Koichi. Okay, stand by. Copy. So, uh, Duke, uh, Nicole Mann okay, is at the... Two turns on M22. Copy two turns, and just to make sure, do you have the pit pin clear of the clevis? Okay, from pit pin is clear. Copy. Okay, now, Koichi, you can go. This is 10 and a half to 11 turns going to torque on M21. So I'll recap, the two astronauts are on the two ends of the uh, lower strut, Nicole Mann, towards the mounting bracket. She's got the pistol grip tool so she can secure it to the mounting bracket. And again, Koichi Wakata is at the base of the mass canister at the other end of that strut, also with his own pistol grip tool. So they're just bolting both sides of the strut uh, to make sure it's secured in place. It's going to go with the lower strut on the left, and then they'll work together on the mid strut next. Okay, um, I got the side turns and then I uh, got a green light, but uh, uh, this is uh, far away from the uh, block line flush. Okay, copy five turns. We are expecting to use the torque wrench for this. So you'll be swapping the two inch rigid from the silver PGT to the torque wrench with a good pull test. And then we'll continue driving M21. Okay. But, uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not on the right side. Uh, when I talked out on the uh, port, um, PGT, it was pretty close to the block, and flush, block line flush. But now I see uh, for, you know, to get the uh, block line flush, it's probably about... Uh, 
We will have you switch to the torque wrench. It will get there all the way with the torque wrench. I know that's going to take uh, more turns. If you want to stand by just a moment, let me ask and see if we can make another plan. Okay, copy that. Okay, copy that. All right, Koichi, uh, we will have you switch to the torque wrench, um, so we're expecting more turns than you had to do on the other side. Okay. But this will get us to the correct torque and correct okay. alignment with that bearing. Copy that. So switch the two-inch rigid to the torque wrench with a good pull test. Okay, copy that. Okay. Copy that. Team work. We've got M21 to torque with the torque wrench. You'll be back at M22, so stand by for M21. Duke, you can also go ahead and install that grounding pit pin into the grounding block on the mounting bracket. Copy, good pull test. Next, you'll drive M21 to torque with that torque wrench, going to full torque so that the torque wrench breaks over twice. It's 14 to 15 turns total, so we're expecting yep. 9 or 10 additional turns with the torque wrench. Copy that. Okay, copy that. It work. Godspeed. I know that's a lot of turns. As a quick overview of installing these struts, um, with the astronauts at both ends of the strut, they alternate uh, driving the bolts. So it was um, Koichi Wakata who started with his pistol grip tool. Once he was done, it went back to Nicole Mann. Now it's back to Koichi Wakata, and then Nicole Mann will do it again. There's only one bolt, but they just address that same bolt two times while alternating. Um, part of the procedure is to just make to avoid anything like stripping or, or anything like that. So right now you see uh, Koichi Wakata using that torque wrench, and that's really just to make sure it's super secure. He's also going to do a pull test, just a quick tug, just to make sure there's no wiggle, and it's uh, truly installed. Um, and so they'll continue to alternate. Nicole Mann has one more, um, uh, one more time has to address that bolt on the on the top side next to the mounting bracket, and then they'll wrap up uh, with the multi-layer insulation, making sure it looks good before getting to the left mid strut, and uh, that'll be the last component of the um, of installing the mounting bracket before they go around and uh, secure the MLI and address any last minute items, but that's the last component um, needed for installation.
Nazina, did you come up twice, break Gucci, you're coming in a little broken there. Will you say again the turn? Black line flush and the torque wrench broke over twice. We'll look for no gap between the strut boss and bearing and a good wiggle test. And I was unable to copy the total number of additional turns that you added. Five turns with the uh, uh, torque wrench and I don't know if you uh, extra camera view, I see gap in the strut Okay, Koichi, we hear you see a gap between the boss and bearing and copied five turns. Okay, Kuichi, stand by one while we talk about that. Copy.
right now both of the uh, astronauts just pausing, uh, taking a moment to uh, relax as they wait for ground teams to assess their work with the bolts on this particular lower strut, um, determining if it's the if it was appropriate for uh, and if the mounting bracket itself and the mounting platform really is in a uh, good configuration before they proceed on to the next steps. Okay, Koichi, we've talked it over. Um, I know you will love this. You get to use the torque wrench even more. What we're going to have you do is continue going until the torque wrench breaks over and then keep going. So this will add extra torque. See if you can get that bolt to move any further and just keep us posted. Okay. So uh, it, it will break over at 60 pounds and then I... Can I keep torquing? A firm, yep. It's going to break over, and as it breaks over, just keep applying it torque. I'll do that. Koichi, ideally we're looking for one additional turn. Let us know if it starts to move at all. Okay. And meanwhile, Duke, we're checking to see if you can start M22 in this configuration, but stand by for now. Duke, you will be able to start this M22, driving M22 to torque. That'll be an additional five to seven turns. You should have that PGT set to Bravo 1, clockwise 2 already. Looking for black line flush. Copy, Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Hey, Koichi, we're watching your camera view here. It looks like it's not moving yeah. if you apply more torque. Is that correct? I concur. Yeah, I concur. It doesn't have any sign of moving. Okay, Koichi. So we're on 22, six and a half turns, green light, 11.9. Okay, copy, six and a half turns, green light, 11.9 on the torque for M22. Duke, we also want black line flush. After that, you can stow your PGT. And then, Koichi, we didn't have a great view of that uh, boss and boss bearing, just to make sure um, if you can take another look at it, see if you can get eyes on. I know it's dark. Um, and make sure that we're looking at the boss to boss bearing clearance as opposed to the pad itself from structure. And also take a wiggle test. Okay. Yeah. 
have a heck of you now. We don't have a great view of it, so we'll trust your uh, eyes in person there. And just looking for the gap between the boss and bearing, see if it's changed Actually, Zena, just looking at the view, uh, there's no change in the last, uh, you know, attempt, you know, to uh, torch it down, throw the, you know, the breaking torch value. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, with this, uh, you know, helmet light, I really do not see the, um, um, the circle bearing side because the circle bearing is uh, dark or the black, and it's. Uh, really dark and it, I cannot tell if it's a shadow or bearing and uh, on the strap boss side to the uh, circle bearing it looks like the gap is small or almost small but with this lighting condition I cannot confirm. Probably what you see is what I'm seeing. Okay. Copy that, Koichi, and we'll have a quick handover coming up here in a couple seconds. If you can do a wiggle test just to see if the boss and boss bearing move together. And then, Duke, for you, you can install the lower strut MLI around the clevis, understanding you've got that pit pin installed already. This is installed, M22, front line flush, working on MLI. Perfect, and you can also release I your the wrist and the and, uh, the boss and the bearing seems to be working together. Copy, Koichi. So now it looks like the alignment is good, but uh, in this lighting condition, it's really difficult to see how much gap we have between the, uh, the shut box and the spherical bearing. Okay, copy, Koichi. We'll talk about that for just a couple of seconds here. Hey. And we've got a quick handover coming in 20 seconds here, but we'll have you just install the MLI on the lower strut pad, Koichi. Copy that. It worked. I confirm I can release my rat. A firm, Duke. Now in another handover period, uh, we temporarily lost video from the International Space Station. Once again, um, we expect a very short handover and we'll be getting some of that video soon. But a quick look here in Mission Control Houston, it's these teams that you're looking at that are uh, guiding the um, Great work, guys. two astronauts through their procedures today. Um, from here in the room, they're working hard to get uh, through the procedures and understand um, um, the next steps and guide both Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata through today's uh, spacewalk. Copy, Koichi. I see that in your heck of you. Um, big picture, we'll be probably trying to come back to this in better lighting conditions so we can get good eyes on. Uh, meanwhile, we'll work on that left mid strut. Copy that. Okay. And Zena, can I just leave the full trench in the PGT, green PGT here in this area? Hey, from Koichi. Duke, bigger picture, next couple of steps for you. You'll be extending that mid-strut toward Koichi, and 
Then you'll be driving M28 to Torque after Koichi gets his side installed. If you want, I can give you PGT settings or we can hold off. Okay, I think they, it remains the same with the um, Bravo 1, Cloudlight 2. Hey, firm. Okay. Ricky, are you going to let that PGT and ratchet go back or you're going to leave it there? I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay. Talk right. Okay. Okay, talk link and the ratchet will remain here. Uh, the yeah, the PGT. Copy, Koichi. You can translate to the left side pad installation location, and once you're there, check that your safer handles are down. Copy that. Me. Check the uh, better config of the uh, PGT and then. Uh, to the web X, just so you know. That's okay. Okay. Okay, then I'm going to translate. I'm in a good place. Okay. Nice work, guys. And Quichi, if you could just check that your safer handles are down as well. And then, Duke, you can extend the strut to Quichi. Do you have an eye on my uh, safer handles? Um, let's see. If you move your right hand up. Right hand up. Can you swing your PCT forward? Yeah, your right paper handle is, good, is down. Okay. That's good. Okay. Paper handle is down. Copy. Thanks so much, Queen. Stand in the left side. Left side, yes, it's okay. down. Good. Okay, great. Thank you, dude, because it's in a paper handle side down. Copy. We appreciate it. All right, for that mast canister side pad, just check that the arrow is pointing up, and once you've got it from Duke, engage the right side first, then press in on the left. See that? Okay, uh, arrow is pointing up. Uh, Duke, could you 
you hold it there? Okay, thank you. Okay, right side first. Alignment was not Okay, try that again. On the right side. Here, vertical alignment, Sina, on this one. Checking, Kuichi. I think there is a sweet spot that you will need to get it in, but I don't think that there's any marker on it. Let me check. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I think I, it's in the sweet spot now. Can I start with the M1 through M4? Yeah, you got the uh, side pad engaged. It is engaged. Okay, perfect. We'll have PGT settings for you. That's Alpha 2, Clockwise 2. Alpha 2, Clockwise 2. On the red PGT. Affirm. And you'll be going two turns on each of those bolts. Each return. And hey, Koichi, looks like that side pad has uh, got a mind of its own and popped off there. Okay. Uh, okay, that's that. Okay, I'll uh, do it again. Okay, Duke, I'm going to go again. Right side first. Okay. Left side in. Like this is in a good hot spot. Okay, clockwise two. Set alpha two set. Copy, Koichi. On M1. Returns on M1. Copy, Kuichi, and stand by. We're seeing a little bit of movement in that side pad. If you could just kind of push on it or give it a little bit of a, a pull test. Feature. So if you start from the right side, there's kind of a lip that you have to engage underneath the plate that you're driving the bolts right. into. So see if you can get that hooked I first. understand that. Yeah, and then press down on the left side. Okay, I'll try that again. Okay, this time a little get closer to the right head. Can I move it 
in that room, but uh, it seems like it, it's in the top dock, but it, it, the bolt, at least one bolt did not engage. I'm just looking at it. Yeah, it looks like it's in a good spot, but it, it doesn't go in. Yeah, Koichi, there's still a little bit of a gap. We have a not a great view in your HECA. I agree. So uh, I'm trying to align it. Somehow it does not go in fully. This is a hot spot, but the, it just doesn't go in. Okay, copy that, Koichi. Uh, one thing that might help is having Duke add some leverage on her end. And just to correct one thing that I said okay. earlier, there's not actually a sweet spot vertically in that alignment. The soft dock should work uh, okay. anywhere vertically on that physical structure. Okay, understood. So this time, I will have uh, Duke push in, is that right? Yeah, have her push it in and towards you. Right, okay. Can I do that, Duke? That collapsed again, hold on. Let me go to a different angle. When you have the right, engage, let me know, and I'll move right okay. in. Okay. Looks like it's, it's in a good spot. Could you push? It doesn't. The thing I'm looking at, I don't know if you see this the heck of a view, but it just doesn't go in. Looks like it's uh, vertically aligned to me. Yeah. It's uh, symmetrical on the upper side and lower side. But Okay, copy all of I that, Luigi. On the, uh, We've got some troubleshooting okay. steps for you here. If you take it off, you'll want to look on the underside of that okay. side pad, and we're going to have you check that the okay. ball detents, there are two of them on the side pad, check that they can be depressed. You can use the hook on one of your uh, adjustables or a ret. Okay, let me check. Yeah, they can move. Can move. Copy that, Koichi. Stand by. Okay, Koichi, so on the right side, you'll see there's kind of a tongue on the soft capture mechanism on the side pad. Yes, I see that. Yeah, so that tongue will have to yeah. fit into a gap on the right side. There shouldn't be much of right. a sweet spot, but just try uh, installing it partially and moving it up and down to see if it will slot into place. We'll 
have you guys try working on this for five or six more minutes, and then we'll formulate another plan. Okay. Koichi, I'm wondering if that MLI on the left side is in the way, left or the right side. Okay, so uh, you want me to remove the MLI and try that? Yeah, Koichi, if you're able to peel up that MLI a little bit, on the right side there's a gap. Exactly, yep. And we'll just get that out of the way fully. And also, the left side is also interfering. The MLI is interfering. Yeah, I concur with that based on what I've seen in your in your view. Stand by and we'll figure something out. Can I, okay. Koichi, you can peel up the left side of the MLI as well and try to get that out of the way. Okay, copy that. I looks like it's a glued on to. No, it is it is Velcro. Okay. Nice work, Koichi. Hey, okay, then let me with this, let me try to engage this one. Duke, just checking in. How you doing over there? Good to go. Copy, thanks. Okay, Duke, let's try that again. Unfortunately, you know, Joy. That looks like a good move that you just did. We'll give it one more try. If you can go up and down with that side pad. And then push in on the left side. If Duke can apply some force as well. Give you a little extra could you, leverage. Could you push in towards, towards yeah. me? I know that telescoping feature is probably not helping you here. Okay, you can release the force. Okay. You, okay, could you do it again now? Okay. Push it. And hey, can we it just doesn't engage, also, Gina. There's the ring on the pit pin at the top, right by where your right hand was just then. See if you can flip that back. And yeah, make sure that it, that's it, not in the way. Okay, now it came off. I'll put it back. Uh, this uh, ring is not interfering. Quickly, from this angle, it looks like I don't see the lip for the right side to engage on the back canister. Hey, let me, let me put, put back the pit pin. Does the pit pin is okay. out? Okay. Come over. All right, thank you. Uh, for the closer. Do you have a heck of you? Not quite, Koichi. Uh, 
You're a little too side. far to your right. That side pad. How about now? Is How a about now? To the Can left. you see that? Negative, Koichi. We're probably going to have you pull off of this task, and we'll just put this strut back in the bag. Okay. Copy that. Do you have a good hacker on mine? Negative, Duke. What we're going to have you do is compress the mid strut and put it back on your BRT, and we're going to work a forward plan from here. We'll need to do some rearranging. Koichi, meanwhile, if you could take some pictures of that location, uh, just get the left side and the right side okay. and all angles that you're able to reach. Copy that. What were you trying to say? Did you say that... I was just not seeing a, like a, an area where that lip went into. It just looked different to me. On this side? There's a, there's a flange. There are two flanges on, on this side. I don't know if, uh, uh, you know, if you have a uh, Duke uh, hacker camera, but uh, yeah, I can there are two flanges where it's pointing at. This round is, is interfering with the uh, the side pad. Yeah, like it doesn't look deep enough to fit this lip. It looks different than the, the other side. Well, it just looks different than I think what uh, maybe what I expect. Oh. Yeah, we copy everything. Quick handover here. So we're in another handover period, um, now getting live views from the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. A quick recap, um, there is a little bit of troubleshooting on that left middle strut. It didn't seem to soft dock properly to that side pad on the mast canister uh, for them to get a really good secure uh, latch to it and allow them to drive the bolts. Um, so what the teams are deciding to do now is they're going to stow that middle left strut uh, and and uh, address the installation at a later date. In the meantime, um, Koichi Wakata is taking photos to allow the ground teams to assess and troubleshoot and come up with recommendations so they can address it the next time they're out there to install it. But it looks like uh, they'll be just leaving it in the configuration with the upper triangle, the right middle and right lower strut, and then the left lower strut. Uh, and then they'll just leave... Um, They'll leave the middle, uh, the left middle strut off for uh, this today's installation. All right, crew, okay, we're back with you. That. Big picture here. We're going to wrap up. Uh, we need to get into some cleanup steps and get you guys back inside. So, what we want you to do is Duke, you'll compress that mid strut, put it on your BRT, get it back in the strut bag, that straps two and three. Koichi, you can close out those pictures and then we'll be having you help with cleanup as well. Okay, copy that. Koichi, before you go, Kuda. Okay. that Duke and once you have that on your BRT you'll take that back to the strut it. bag. One other thing we'll want to think about is the right upper strut that still needs the MLI covering M13 and M14 so we'll work a forward plan for that but if you guys have suggestions based on what you're seeing let us know. Okay. 
Okay, what about, do you want 15 and 16 covered right now, even though we don't have that mid strut in? Checking. Yeah, A-Firm, Duke, okay. if you can do that, Peter, can that would be great. Go ahead, Kuichi. Yeah, I can get it here. Uh, can I translate to the uh, strut bag now, or do you want me to do the MMI here? Kuichi, we'll have you do the right upper <coughs> MLI to cover M13 and M14. Right upper, okay. And yeah, you so can gonna finish walk, putting um, that MLI back that you took off there. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. You know, what about right mid? Are you going to want that MLI over the color bill? Yes, Duke, we will want the MLI over those collar bolts as well. Okay, so, uh, Dana, could you say again uh, which MLI I need to work on now? And hey, Koichi, before you depart, if you can tuck that MLI a little bit better, just make sure that everything's covered there. See that? But it was like that, though. As you can see, this uh, brown color velcro was already exposed. So I think this is the initial condition. We copy Koichi, concur with that. You can head to the right upper strut, work on the MLI on M13, M14. Copy that. So, uh, to go to the right upper strut, which translation path can I take? Koichi, we'll have you just backtrack the way that you got there in the first place. Just go back around. Uh, right, oh, excuse me, not the left, the right side. Okay, copy that. Yeah, correct. Yeah, the right side. Yep. So. Yeah, sorry. That. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought it was the left side. Okay, copy that. So, Zena, do you want me to roll this APFR over so I can get the, and he unrolls the MLI on the right side, I can grab it? You're going to have him translate on the right mid-strut. Checking, Duke. Duke, let's have you prioritize stowing that mid-strut back in the strut bag.
Okay, Zina, the analyze that you want me to work on is the, the cover bolt form. A from Koichi, great work. Copy that. And Duke, for you, for that uh, mid strut back in the strut bag, that'll be straps two and three, ideally. Zena, can I just uh, cover the uh, those uh, M13 and 14 bolts? Excuse me, the uh, M24 bolts on this uh, NLI? Yeah, Koichi, we need the whole strut to be covered with MLI. Copy that. So a quick recap: uh, Wakata and Man uh, both working in tandem for cleaning up their work site. Man is working on um, putting that left metal strut back in the strut bag uh, and stowing it to be installed at a later date. Uh, and Wakata is over on the right strut side uh, working on the multi-layer insulation and making sure that the insulation is covering some of the bolts that they were working on today. Luigi, once you get that ML and these are both uh, over M13 closeout duties. <laughs> You'll also want to install two wire ties on the telescoping end. Okay, copy that. And Duke, for you, after you get that mid strut stowed, we'll want you to translate to the APFR and grab the PGT and torque wrench. And just big picture awareness for you guys, right now we're at five and a half hours PET. Our limiting consumable is still Medox, but we've got a little over seven hours of PET time there. So we just want you guys to get everything in a good config to leave it. We'll be coming back out for this mod kit, but we'll be into cleanup and then getting you guys back inside. Okay, copy that, Tina. Yeah, this MLI, does, uh, MLI that covers the M24, does it uh, go first, or does the uh, MLI that covers the M13 and 14 goes first? Or the order doesn't matter. There's no specified order, Guigi. Okay, copy that. And then, Duke, while you're there, actually, before we have you grabbing that uh, PGT and torque wrench from the APFR, we'll have you just bundle up that strut bag as low profile as possible, so kind of burrito it around that strut. Okay, so the PGT and the torque wrench, they're going to go back in the cable bag still? Yeah, they'll be going back in the cable bag eventually. Okay. Same with the GoPro and MUT end effector. Copy. 
Duke, for that strut, whatever works best for you, you really only need one of those straps. Add another one if it helps hold it in place for bundling ops, but it doesn't need to be pretty. Just bag it up. Okay. Right into the bag, you know. Copy, Duke. That sounds great. Koichi, you can add a wire tie right where your hand just was to help keep that flap closed. Okay. So two uh, wire ties here, right? Are you okay if I don't see this uh, Velcro through these little C-rings? Hey, Fern, I'm you... I'm hoping to Velcro it down. Yeah, you're good okay. to leave it as you have it. That's totally fine. Okay. And I think we're actually going to have you uh, okay. leave this strut bag as is and have you go work tool gathered for the cable bag. But stand by one, let me clarify. Okay. Try to get a look down while you're thinking of talking about it. Two uh, uh, wire ties between the uh, color bolt and the uh, M24, correct? Copy, Koichi. That looks great. That's in a good spot. Okay. okay. Three twists here. And then another one, right? Uh, close to the uh, color bolt. Yeah, you'll be exactly that. Okay. You, know, you need inventory of the bag, or were you able to see everything on the HECA? No, we've been watching on HECA, Duke. I think with that, we will have you okay, thought, leave the I'll start bag. Down. Copy. And then uh, let me get Delta since I got it in my hands here. Okay, copy. That is great. Okay, I'll find Delta strapped at least. That looks great, Duke. With that, we can have you translate to the APFR. You'll retrieve the PGT and torque wrench. 
and then bring those to the cable bag and stow them in the cable bag. Is this a good spot for the second Wayatai? That looks great, Koichi. With that, you can okay. finish up there. We'll have you translate to the strut bag. You're going to be finishing folding the strut bag, uh, make it low profile enough for you to take it back inside. You'll be stowing it on your BRT and then translating to the anchor hooks. Okay. Okay, Koichi, I'm right beneath you. Okay, copy that. Right. Um, this is above me right now. So. Okay. Let me uh, finish this up, and then I'll translate down so that I can be clear. I need to, um, I don't want to crisscross with you. I just need to grab this BRGT and this um, okay. bracket, and then I'm going to be outboard of, or inboard of you. So. Okay. I will stay here then until you're clear. Okay. Yeah. Then it should be good. We like that plan. Do you see my safety tether? It looks like... It was, it was kind of routing. Yeah, you'll take it down. Can you see it? Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, yeah, I see your safety tether. And then. Oh. Uh, it should be good. Yeah. I'll just stay here until you're clear of the uh, safety tether, of my safety tether. Okay, I've got a rat on the ratchet, and I see the ratchet is ready to the PTT, so I'm going to release it. Okay. Copy, Duke. And as you pitched forward just then, Koichi's safety tether went between your legs, so just be aware of that. It's clear now, but it's in, a, in the zone. Okay. I am marching. All right, then with that, I will translate. Uh, not yet, Koichi. I'm still here. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, so I will stay okay. here. I need to go inboard, though, just so you know. All yeah, right, right. And I will start translating. Okay, I've got it. I'm moving. Copy, and Duke, if you can reach it, just fold that ingress aid down so that we can leave the APFR in place. We're going to leave it, okay. And I did roll it back to Fox Shot just for your uh, bookkeeping. Okay, copy, we'll track that. And Duke, we can either have you fold that ingress aid down or Koichi, we'll leave it up to you. I could do that. Down. Copy, Duke. And Koichi, just trend yourself toward the mass canister so you're not translating on that mod kit. Copy that. Hey, 
Creek here. Am I clear at your safety center? Yes, you are. Okay. So a quick review, um, the two astronauts, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, uh, out at the uh, outside of the International Space Station have installed several of the struts needed to construct the modification kit on the 1A channel. They were not able to successfully install the left middle strut. Um, the side pad on the mast canister did not engage properly. So right now they're working on cleanup steps. They're stowing a lot of their tools and including the left middle strut uh, and making sure that the multi-layer insulation, that white fabric that surrounds the um, mounting platform is in a good configuration and is going to maintain the integrity of the hardware. Uh, and once everything looks good, the two will transfer Translate or move back to the airlock. Just tend it toward the lower strut there, specifically the left side. We're not sure that. Okay. Yeah. So the the other side from where you are now. Oh, my left side. Is that the uh, right lower strut you're talking about? Or the left lower strut? Yeah, sorry, Koichi. That's going to be the left lower, so actually not the area where you are now. You'll be translating to the other side. Okay. I'll do that. I'll go there. Do I need to translate the uh, around this uh, TV uh, example fixture side, or can I just translate around the GA? Check in, Kuichi. You can go across the ATFR, Kuichi. Yeah, Kuichi, unfortunately, you'll need to go down and around to the other side and then back up. Okay, copy that. Just if you want, you can try to see if you can reach. We just can't have you translating on the mod kit since we don't have the collar bolts torqued. Right, right, understand that. But uh, so I can try translate around the BGA, right? That's great. Okay, yeah, I can translate this way. I just could not translate on the uh, the mod kit, so I had to go around. Okay, I was just thinking you could maybe go across the APFR. But uh, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Take that back. I think I have to translate the original plan. Copy, Koichi. Okay, Zina, I'm bundling this uh, kit, this cable bag. Is it going on my BRT? Stand by, Duke. Duke, first we'll have you grab the MUT end effector with the GoPro, stow that in the cable bag, and then, yes, you will be putting the cable bag on your BRT and getting ready to head in.
Vita, you're talking about this uh, bundle into the uh, and into the uh, handrail just in, uh, uh, in front of me? Yeah, that's correct. It's already uh, wire tied. Just at the one wire tie on the lower strut, you know, the three twists. Same as the right side. Right. Yeah. Koichi, big picture, that uh, trunnion pin that your right hand is on right now, we were worried that the cable bundle might snag on that when we go to rotate the BGA, uh, snag on that or on the APFR. Okay. So we just want to tend it as close as possible to that lower strut just to make sure that it'll clear. Okay. All right. Copy that. Then, uh, looks like uh, uh, what Duke did is uh, securing one side, so I will uh, tie... Um, one more, uh, one more tie around the uh, handrail on the, uh, this is the uh, one alpha left side bundle. That sounds great, Koichi. Good plan. Okay. Just get that big loop okay. of the bundle okay. as close, tight into that left lower strut as possible. And then uh, do I need to add a uh, wire tie or can I use this wire tie that already exists? Yeah, you can use the existing one. Copy that, yeah, if you can read it in the bag and then close up the cable bag. Copy. Okay, Zina, I attached uh, this uh, existing wire tie in three twists to the, uh, the handrail on the lower strap. Copy, Koichi, I see that in your heck of you. We'll make sure that everybody agrees, but that looks really good to me. And I'll have some big picture words for you in just a second about our final steps to get you guys ingressed. Okay. Okay. And Koichi, we'll have you actually add one more wire tie. Looks like the loop of that cable bundle is still hanging down a bit towards that trunnion pin, and we're not convinced that it will clear. If you see that loop that's closest to your right hand on the trunnion pin right now, we just want to get that up and out of the way. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think adding another so, wire tie is probably the easiest. Okay, copy that. I will do that.
Yeah, Koichi, I think if you can get a wire tie around that, just like you have your hand doing right now, and then take it up to the tether point on the mounting bracket itself. Tether point on the mount is uh, here. You're talking about this? A firm. Okay, and uh, all right. I have a short wire tie in uh, my mount. I not uh, give me enough length to do that. Agree, Zina. Short wire tie does not give enough uh, length to get there to the tether point. Yeah, copy that, Koichi. If you're able to just kind of feed it through the tether point. Uh, and then the the wire tie doesn't necessarily have to loop back onto itself. You could have one twist up top on the tether point and then the other end going down to the cable bundle. I'm not sure that's enough length. Let me work an alternate plan for you just a sec. Yeah. yeah, probably not. Uh -uh. I'm gonna put this on my BRT and head inboard if you agree. Duke, let's have you work on the strut bag, see if you can get that any more folded and ready to go for Koichi to eventually put that on his BRT, and then we'll have you head back in. Copy. Okay. Zena, can I try to uh, use my uh, short wire tie from this... Uh the point on the uh, mountain bracket. A firm. Koichi, I think if you take okay. off the wire tie that you just added a couple steps ago and then move the whole thing up I higher. I did add a... Or, sorry, the, uh, the one oh, that was okay. already the existing wire tie, undo it from right. where you just added twists and then move the whole bundle okay. further up that lower strut as close to the mounting bracket as possible. Hey, let me try that. And see if you can get that wire tied to kind of hug the whole cable bundle to the strut. Okay. Is there, my cooling is at six. Copy six, Duke. Big picture, guys, we're just shy of six hours on PET here. Your limiting consumable still has a little over seven hours for Medox. So you're doing a good job. Keep it up with the cleanup, and we'll get you back inside. Copy that. So, you know, this is what you're talking about. So I'm going to attach this uh, long wire tie to the uh, mountain bracket tether point. Is he? Hey, Fern, that's a good plan, Koichi. A quick review of the work done so far. Um, right now, the astronauts are doing some cleanup duties during an orbital night time. The space station is flying 264 statue miles um, over Western Europe right now. Uh, they're just making sure their work site is in a good configuration so it can be addressed during a future spacewalk. So they're using wire ties to make sure the cables are secure. They're checking the multi-layer insulation, putting their tools away in their respective bags. Uh, just making sure the work site over at the 1A power channel is um, is in a good configuration to leave it so they can schedule a, a spacewalk at a later time um, to finish some of the work over here. Uh, they started on the construction of the um, 1A modification kit and was not able, they were not able to install that left middle strut 
They took some photos so the ground teams can assess some of that work and uh, figure out what um, steps need to be put into place to make sure that they can have uh, a secure attachment of that left strut to the mast canister uh, and the whole fixture that will soon be holding up uh, future IROSA or International Space Station um, rollout solar arrays. Uh, those set to be delivered to the International Space Station this summer. Again, there are four total that are already there on the space station installed and providing power. Um, there, they were today during today's spacewalk. We're working on modification kits for two power channels. Guichi, if you could tilt up so that we can see the mounting bracket. Just want to get one last heck of survey here. Koichi, that looks great. We are really happy with that config. With that, you can leave that work site. You'll head back toward Duke and help finish up the strut bag. Eventually, you'll be putting the strut bag on your BRT. She'll lead the translation back in, Copy that. and you'll follow back to the anchor hooks and then continue to ingress. Judgment. Koichi is going to be translating back in with this on his BRT, so we'll leave it to your and Koichi's judgment about what's going to work. Which, if you also have good eyes on your safety tether, we just want to make sure that it's not going back around the mast canister uh, and that you'll be good to head inboard from where you are. I, I did not go, uh, yeah, safety tether is with me and I'm going uh, outboard to this uh, PD grapple fixture area so it's clear from the DGA. Copy, Koichi.
Okay, Duke, once you have that bag and a good config to hand off to Koichi, we'll have you start heading inboard. If it helps to both be there together while Koichi puts it on his BRT, let us know, but we'd like to prioritize just getting you headed back inboard. We'll get that strut bag on Koichi's BRT and he'll follow you in. Duke, we're about a minute from a quick handover. Copy that. My hop is uh, baseline. Uh, my gloves look good and my gauntlets are down. Copy all. Now in another uh, brief handover period, losing that video from the International Space Station, we'll be regaining it shortly. Right now, Wakata and Mann are both um, still at the work site uh, where they've been for the past couple of hours. Now six hours and six minutes into today's spacewalk. Um, they've wrapped up their cleanup duties, really just taking those last tools and making sure they're stowed, or in uh, the case of the strut bag, attached to their body restraint tether so they can tow it back with them. But the main objective now uh, is to get back to the airlock. They're going to get back into the crew uh the crew lock of the airlock. This is where um, they'll close the hatch and repressurize to 14.7 um, psi, the pressure of the International Space Station, and get back inside. Copy, Koichi. That's great news. You can start following Duke back in. the 
Just follow you. Okay, copy that. I am not behind you. are catching Hello. exactly what we think we see, which is uh, pretty sure Duke's safety tether is hung up. I think Koichi will be able to clear it for you so that you don't have to go back outboard, Duke. And just a reminder for okay. Koichi, you'll be pausing okay. at those anchor hooks okay. until Duke so is safe in the airlock. Okay, copy that. So let me clear that. Okay. All right. So. 
come a little bit uh, yeah. outboard because my tether back is right here, and so it's not. Okay. Uh, okay. And then uh, okay, this, uh, this, this, yeah, this tether is uh, going through your mini workstation, so let me clear that. This is, uh, this is your safety tether, yes? Yeah? yeah, this is my uh, safety tether, but it's going through your maybe workstation area with, uh, let's see. Shall uh, I rotate like this? Just, just a moment. Uh, don't, don't move. I think it's just on the wrong side of this tether pack because the anchors are right by each other. Another uh, brief lapse in video from the International Space Station. Again, all of these are just a matter of seconds, really, so we'll be regaining that shortly and should hear voice from the International Space Station here soon. What you were witnessing was uh, both Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann translating or moving back to the airlock. Um, along the way, they were making sure that they were in a good configuration with their tethers that actually keep them anchored to the International Space Station as a safety precaution. Um, so they are just making sure that the tethers are where they're supposed to be and where they expect them to be and that they're not tangled. Um, okay, so they're working together to just make sure those are in a good configuration as they continue to work their 
their way back to the airlock. We're now six hours, 18 minutes into today's spacewalk. That hook. But that hook. We're, we're, we're clear. We're You're back. clear. Okay, perfect. Amazing. Yeah, I think we are clear. Great. Great. Carry on then. All right. Okay, well, now as I say that, I still see it. Your safety feathers here, Kalichi. Yep. Okay, so now do you have eyes on the anchor? Okay. Just so, uh, I don't know if that's, that's your anchor. Do you see it? To you guys, but if it helps, you can put down a waist tether, lock the hook black on black, and undo the anchor hook in order to clear any snags that you're seeing. Okay, I'm going to yeah. do that. Okay. So, you know, okay. I have my waist tether down to the end rail. And just make sure it's locked. locked. I see it. I'm releasing my anchor. Copy, Duke. Okay, I'm releasing my anchor hook. Do you want my anchor hook while we're here? You might as well take it. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me local this. So I'm local, okay. Uh, so, let me, uh, this one I can take it, yeah. Just a moment. <laughs> My left weight center is attached to Duke's ankle hook. Gate closed on both sides. Hook blocked, block on block. So I'm daisy chain to Duke. Okay, you happy with that low tap, Zena? Copy, we're tracking. Both hooks are locked, block on block. That's a good load pass. Okay, I'm releasing my, uh, unlocking my local and, uh, All right, All right. I see your. If we attach this. And then I just wanted to report uh, the, uh, somehow my CCA on the left side is not working so I can hear from my right side only. Copy, Koichi. And we'll have you guys stand by just one second. We want to make sure that we really understand this tether config that we're in before you send, we send you anywhere. Okay, guys, with both Koichi's waist tether locked 
and Duke's anchor hook locks to Koichi's waist tether, and Koichi's anchor hook still attached to structure lock block on block. We're good with this config. You can head inboard Duke, and we'll get you on the airlock gearing extender. Okay, copy, and I'm going to uh, Wait, can move this a little closer if I can. I don't want it to get hungry. And just to be super clear, Duke's going to okay. head inboard. Koichi, you'll stay put until Duke is safe in the airlock. Hi. And then after she reestablishes that load path, yep, exactly, you'll be cleaning up the slingshot. See that? I'll wait. So, he's in the airlock. Okay, you might like to, uh, did you type the DRT? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. All right. I'll be following you. I already uh, uh, put the uh, the guard brakes on the outboard side twice. Copy, Koichi. And we'll just have you stay put. Okay, I'm on the uh, Copy, Duke. And Koichi, we appreciate the get ahead, but we will have you also uh, touch those brakes one more time as you head inboard, just to make sure that that's the last thing on the seat of cart that you touch. Understand.
And Quichi, just making sure we'll have you stay put right where you are and wait until Duke gets back in the airlock. I'm uh, just standing by here, just changing the local position. Copy that, Kuichi. Quichi on top of the feet of fur. Okay, copy that. Okay, copy. I see you actually. Great work, Duke. Heads up, we're at about six and a half hours PET. So right now, Duke, or NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, has arrived at the airlock. She's going to open up the thermal cover and get it prepared um, so she can ingress. But Koichi Wakata is standing by with the strut bag in tow. That strut bag has that final strut, the mid-left strut, that they're going to be bringing back into the airlock with them. So he's just standing by for now as uh, Mann gets the hatch configured. That's great news. Koichi, you can go ahead and head inboard. You'll pick up your anchor hook from handrail 3011, stow it on your mini workstation, and translate in. You will need to press the starboard seat of brakes and the port seat of brakes on your way in. Copy that. It works. Copy, Duke. Like that plan. Okay, I picked up my anchor hook to my mini workstation. I'm gonna push the brake pedal of the power. Go ahead, brake, brake pedal twice complete. And I'm gonna start translating to the airlock. And heads up for both of you, especially Duke right now, we were tracking in the airlock. One of the large, small rets that's strung out is locked so that it might be kind of a loose snag hazard as you head in.
Wakata making his way back to the airlock. This whole time he's been uh, in the suit with red stripes. He's got that strut bag in tow. Meanwhile, Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, wearing the suit with no stripes. Luigi, sorry to bug you. Just to confirm, you did hit those feet of bricks I didn't have good eyes on. Duke, once you have that cable bag stowed on the airlock during extender RET, we'll have you turn off your HECA and ingress. Okay, uh, port side uh, inboard of brake pedals uh, push right. Copy. Thanks so much, Guigi. Thank you. Now a good view of the airlock. Uh, that's ast NASA astronaut Nicole Mann making her way into the airlock after getting a go to do so. Very shortly we'll be seeing Koichi Wakata who will be taking up the rear and exiting or entering the crew lock last. It'll be his job to make sure the strut bag, which is currently on his body restraint tether of the spacesuit, gets uh, maneuvered into the crew lock with them. Okay. He'll be the one to close that thermal cover, the um, soft fabric flap that goes over okay. the uh, hatch to the crew lock. Maybe your NCU a little bit trapped behind the hatch. Just make sure for us that you have access to it and that you'll be able to install it when the time comes. We see you. For both of you, we'll take one final TCV setting just before we get you hooked up on them, Bill Hills.
problem. Luigi, was that six for you? Yep, correct. The six for Luigi. Okay, copy. We're tracking six for both of you. I'm at the airlock, just uh, standing by here. Okay, I'm uh, fighting with this SC2 here. Copy that. Alright, I think I got it. Right. Ground copies everything. Uh, we Luigi, we'll just have you hang out there to give Duke maximum space for trying to get that SCU out from behind the hatch. Okay. Okay, copy that. Okay, it's still tucked behind the hatch a little bit, but I can, uh, I have enough slack. It reaches me, so I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, is that okay, Zena? Copy, Duke, and uh, you don't see any way that it would be in the way of the hatch actually operating? Uh, it's behind the hatch, so I think, um, yeah, it's like in the top. Uh, like the Venus corner of the hatch, so I think when the hatch comes down, that'll solve the problem. Okay, copy. I think if I pull it all the way out, it'll be more of a snag hazard. Because all the velcros come off. Are you good with that plan? Stand by, Duke. We're checking. Okay, Duke, if you are confident that you have enough slack to actually connect the SCU to your DCM and that it's not going to interfere with the hatch operation, we're good with that config. And Koichi, you can then continue to ingress the airlock and turn off your HECA as you ingress. Yeah, it looks clear like it's going to be no problem uh, closing that hatch, and I definitely have flex. Okay, that's perfect. Great news. With that, Koichi will have you ingress and turn off your HECA. Okay. And keep in mind, copy. you'll also be wanting to close the hatch thermal cover, so if you want to attach any tethers to it, now's the time. Can I start working on my SCU now, or do I need to wait? You can. We'll also have you receive that strut bag in the best way possible from Koichi, and I think he should do that before he tries to ingress. Okay. And uh, if you can let me know when I can put in the uh, strut bag. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'm ready for it. Okay. Then I'm going to release it from my BRT. Okay, 
you coming in. It's coming at you. All right, I have the step down. Okay, still read it for me. Okay, let me get a let down. Okay. 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 Can you release the rat from there? Yep. Your red's coming back to you. Okay, great. Thank you. Got it. Okay, Tina, with that, uh, do I have a go to ingress? Hey, from Kuichi, you can ingress. Turn off your HECA as you ingress. And then you'll be closing the hatch thermal cover. Okay. Releasing the hook from its stowage point. Okay. And attaching the hook to the magnetic plate D-ring and cinching the strap until you see six lines available. Okay. okay, copy that. Uh, before that, I'd uh, just like to uh, uh, thank uh, to the, um, big thanks to the AVA team, uh, especially uh, Chloe Maring, uh, Keith Johnson, Ted Kessel, Anna Burns, uh, Stephen Villano, and, and of course, uh, our great uh, Grand Ivy Zena uh, for putting together the excellent work procedures and executing it, and we encountered a, you know, challenges, and, but uh, appreciate your flexibility uh, to safely return us uh, to, to the airlock. And I also like to uh, thank uh, our trainer, uh, Mark Wilsley and uh, Mark Wilsey and David Simon for training us on the EMU systems and uh, get us ready for EVA. And I know Jasper team is uh, supporting the EVA in Houston and in Scuba. And I really like to uh, thank uh, to all of them. Today, the EVA has been able to provide you with all of the information you need. Thank you very much. Today, the most important thing is that you are able to see the future of the EVA. It was very impressive. I will be able to see the future of the EVA. I will be able to see the future of the EVA. I will be able to see the future of the EVA. I will be able to see the future of the EVA. I will be able to see the future of the EVA. Thanks again. Kuichi, thank you for those kind words. Congratulations on your EVA. Let's get you inside and safe on that SCU. Really proud of this team and all of the hard work. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Zina. And Zina, can I go work in my SCU? A firm Duke, you can connect your SCU to the DCM. Just make sure that it won't be a snag hazard for Kuichi as he's ingressing. Okay, I'll uh, really get this in here. We see you looking good. That strap bag is above your head. Okay. And the cable bag is Venus. It should be clear, though. Okay, let me get the uh, thermal cover. In case you missed it, uh, Koichi Wakata gave some congratulatory and thankful words to the teams that made it possible for he and NASA astronaut Nicole Mann to conduct today's spacewalk. Um, these are the f his final words before he enters the crew lock and they begin the repressurization sequence. Nicole Mann is already in the crew lock, uh, just waiting for the next steps to hook up her umbilical um, to the International Space Station. Her suit still on the portable life support system, but that umbilical will um, provide um, water and oxygen and other power and other consumables um, to be 
transferred directly from station to the astronauts. So we'll just wait for Koichi Wakata to make his ingress successful, and then we'll begin the repressurization shortly after. And get the hook back to the magnetic plate D-ring and the strap cinched, and just verify that the magnet is engaged. know when you have your SEU connected to the DCM. Once you do, just a note that a TCV setting between 8 and max cooling will minimize the time necessary to get cooling on your SEU.
Okay, Eva, I see you. It's connected. Great work, Koichi. We copy all. Happy to have you both back on SCU. With that, you can switch water to off. That's the forward position. Expect H2O is off message on your DCU. Okay, copy that. Uh, you are in work. DCU in work. Water is OFF EV1. Off, easy Copy. Water is off for both of you. We've started a two-minute timer. Once that timer is up, you'll be getting ready to close the hatch. Copy. So a quick recap. Both astronauts are inside the crew lock right now. They're hooked up by umbilical to the International Space Station. They're setting a timer for uh, the procedures to... Uh, get ready, uh, get the suits ready and themselves ready before closing the hatch and beginning the repressurization process. Uh, the clock is still going for today's spacewalk and it'll officially stop once we start that repressurization. All right, guys, we've got the two-minute timer up. Verify the outer hatch is clear of hardware. And verify the handle position is per the hatch decal. Then you'll close and lock the hatch. Okay, uh, if you have copies, it works. Do you want me to stabilize your feet? Okay, it's good. I just wanted to make sure nothing is caught. Can I go a little more stubborn? Yeah. Can, can you pull my legs? <laughs> I'm hitting something that I cannot go any further. Do you, you see my feet? Are... Okay, let me take your feet. Um, you're kind of at an angle. If you straighten up a little bit, the feet. Okay, then. Now you can lift your feet up a little bit over the UIA lip, and you can come aft. I'm aft. Okay. I'm sorry, but um, I told me. Okay.
We're in another uh, brief handover period. Again, this one is also relatively short, uh, so we'll be getting that video um, back from the International Space Station very shortly. Already have some audio. The crew are inside the crew lock right now. They're going through their steps um, to get the hatch closed inside the crew lock. There's a couple more steps for the umbilicals just to provide oxygen and power through the International Space Station to them before they begin that repressurization. Acknowledge the message, Duke. Okay, that, so that way that is clear now, can we see? Somehow it cannot go higher. Okay, I think it's good now. It's clear. Okay, it was clear, yeah. yeah okay. That's good. Okay, I see you called you so there. Zena hatch is uh, closed in and uh, locked. Copy. That is great news. We are with that moving into our repress cue card. Copy. Okay. On your DCM, just check for me that your SCUs are connected to your DCM and check that the water switch is off. is connected and the water switch is OLS. Okay, connected and water is off for EV2. Copy both. Check that the EV hatch is closed and locked. EV hatch is closed and locked. On the UIA, check that the oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valve is open. for EV1 and 2 to on. Our EV1 and 2 are on to good green LEDs. Copy, good green LEDs. Check that the power voltage is between 18 and 19 for both. Both are 18.6. Copy, on your DCM, switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. Hey, switch to SCU in work, EV1. Did we stagger this one, Zena? Negative, you don't need to stagger this one. of you from inside the International Space Station. Just like in the beginning of the day, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassada, NASA astronauts inside the equipment lock. On the other side of that hatch is our two spacewalking astronauts. That hatch is down to vacuum right now. And then once both of you have switched power to SCU, I'll be ready to hand it over to Frank. 
We can see him there in the equipment lock. And okay, still AV up in work. No okay, problem, guys. EV2 is power to SCU. Copy EV2. Great work, both of you. Copy. You are both now on SCU power. With that, I can hand it over to Frank. Thank you both for your incredibly hard work, lots of strength and grace dealing with so much finicky hardware today. Thank you for this incredible EVA. Grateful for the opportunity to work with you both. Over to Frank. Thank you, Vina. Yeah, thank you very much, Vina. I really enjoyed working with you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Vina. And Zena, great job as uh, ground IV. Thanks so much for getting us to this point. Koichi and Nicole, it's great to have you guys back. Thank All you. right, so for both of you, on your DCMs, take your O2 actuator to press. EV1 in work. EV2 in work. For Koichi, could we have you get a good wiggle test on that O2 actuator, just make sure it's all the way in press? Copy that. Okay, wiggled, and the uh, DCM shows. Yes. Copy, Koichi, thank you.
For those uh, tuning in now, uh, Frank Rubio on the inside of the uh, station's equipment lock is walking the crew through the repressurization procedure. Right now they just have to make sure some of the knobs and dials that they're turning are all the way. The ground team is assessing to make sure that uh, the crew is following the steps very intricately until they begin the repressurization. So they're just verifying that everything is okay. Yeah, copy. We know that's a hard one to actuate. As long as you've got that lever pushed up and the button pushed in to move it into press, um, we can let you keep working on it. We can also work a, an alternate plan for you. Okay, I think we can press with the NEVA. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Basically, we'd just be having you do the repress a little more slowly to make sure that we don't actuate SOP. Can we release the mini the workstation and uh, I push the button? Uh, you want to remove it? Yeah. Can you get to the tab? Almost there. Can you lower the tab? You cannot, right? Again? Can you lower the tab on the right side? I can't see it. Can you tell me? If it go up a little bit, that's it. That's it. Uh, go down. You you go to your right a little bit. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's the tab. Sounds like you guys are doing great work in there. If you want to, we can continue with the repress with your O2 actuator still in EVA. Big picture, we'd just be going a lot more slowly. Duke, you would maintain really good comms with Frank, and you would just need to keep your suit pressure, monitoring your suit pressure to make sure that delta P is above four for the duration of the repress, and that will keep us from activating your SOP. 
Let's, uh, we're going to do it one side here to get off the mini workstation. Okay, now it's good. Okay. All right, now I can remove it. Left, right side is out. And then left side. Let's take a look. Let me know when you get the switch. So a reminder that the uh, process to get the two crew members back inside the International Space Station and repressurize that crew lock to get them both in is a, is a very methodical process. So the ground teams are working in tandem with the crew that you see here from your view inside the International Space Station, all talking and monitoring along the way, making sure uh, that they're following the steps to get them back in. With that confirmation, they got the actuator, the oxygen actuator, where they need to go, so they're working through the next steps. We're going to start the repress, and let me know what's a good rate. I'll start off nice and slow, so IV hatch equalization valve, I will follow from off the norm. Happy. Reminder for disregard. for both of you? Good for me. It's, uh, you can go faster for me. Okay, equalization. 
Koichi, you okay with that? Yeah, you can go faster. And once we reach 4 PSI, you can expect an alert tone. EV1 copy. EV2 copy. All right, so what you're hearing now is the repressurization underway. And with the repressurization start, that is the official end time for today's spacewalk. That total spacewalking time is 7 hours and 21 minutes, with the repressurization beginning at 2.35 p.m. Central Time. The repressurization process is in reverse from what we saw at the start of today's spacewalk, going down from 14.7 PSI down to 5, holding for a little bit to make sure there were no leaks before proceeding down to vacuum. It's now in reverse from vacuum up to 5 PSI, same, same process, holding for just a couple of minutes to make sure there are no leaks uh, before they continue to proceed up to pressure, uh, matching and equalizing that of the inside of the space station where Frank Rubio is uh, with his crewmates. And uh, that will be up to 14.7 PSI. So right now we're in a couple of minute hold period. Guys, our two minutes of stabilization is up. Now we'll do a one minute pressure check. Copy.
Okay, guys, our pressure is stable. So next, you will both take your glove heaters off. Okay, you need my glove heaters off. All right, say again. Uh, check that your glove heaters are off. Oh, oh okay. EV2 is off. Okay, and I heard EV2 and EV1 glove heaters are off. Uh, for both of you, check that your <coughs> check gloves for contamination. EV1, no uh, contamination. EV2, no contamination. Okay, copy for both. Uh, for both of you, take your O2 actuator to IV. It works. IV. EV1, uh, OJS student IV. Okay, copy for EV1 and EV2. Uh, okay, we are now going to go back to finish the repress. So I'll uh, start off slow and then increase the rate. Let me know if um, you don't feel comfortable. You can expect a, an alert tone both when I start and also when DPDT is about zero. Okay, copy that. And Station Houston 2, uh, correction 1, uh, for Koichi, uh, could you verify your O2 actuator is in IV? It is in IV and DCM display shows IV. I'm going to jiggle it. Okay, copy that Koichi, good config. And with that confirmation, the repressurization inside the crew lock has resumed. So we are increasing from 5 PSI up to equalize with the inside of the space station, which is sitting at about 14.7, the same as we have here on Earth. As we make our way up to match that for the International Space Station, we do have some statistics now that the space station, the spacewalk for today has concluded. Uh, that spacewalk, again, was 7 hours, 21 minutes. It was the 258th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Uh, for the uh, two spacewalking astronauts, it was a first. It was the first space station spacewalk in 2023, but the fifth overall during this expedition, Expedition 68. For Wakata, this was his first spacewalk, so he gets the total runtime for today's spacewalk, which is again 7 hours 21 minutes. It's the same for Man, 7 hours 21 minutes for her career as well. Um, and that is the total runtime for today's spacewalk, which ended at 2.35 p.m. Central Time. If you take all of the 258 spacewalks that have been conducted in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, you get a total of 68 days, 5 hours, and 47 minutes. Now back to the action. Again, uh, Rubio on the right and uh, NASA astronaut Josh Cassida on the left. 
uh, will be working to oversee the repressurization and ingress of the uh, astronauts from the crew lock into the equipment lock where the two are situated. Once they get inside, uh, the two spacewalking astronauts will flank um, Cassida and Rubio to the left and to the right. They'll get situated in those racks, the silver racks. You see uh, right now one very clearly behind um, Josh Cassida. Uh, but first we got to make our way up to equalize with the pressure of the International Space Station. And the uh, rate is a little faster than we saw for the depressurization sequence. So right now we're a little more than 12 PSI. Again, we're going to about 14.7. Repressurization is complete. So Frank Rubio, you see turning that uh, handle to open up the hatch. Houston Station on one for step four. Go ahead on one. Hey, Corey, are you, will you guys take care? I'm sorry. Aki, will you guys uh, take care of uh, step four and one decimal two four zero? And Frank, we are taking care of it. First in the hatch is uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who took on the EV-2 position for today. She was the first in the hatch at the conclusion of today's spacewalk. Cassida and Rubio as the suit IVs. They're the ones responsible for getting both of the astronauts uh, situated so they can start doffing or taking off their suits. One of the uh, first steps for them is uh, at the base of the suit's backpack um, is a unit called the SAFER. Uh, that's sort of their 
um, emergency jetpack that they would use in the very unlikely scenario that they were that they would become untethered. Houston on one, uh, EV crew is no longer hot mic. Copy, I can take you. So you can see the safe room uh, unit has been removed from the base of the backpack of Nicole Mann's spacesuit. Josh Cassida now working to collapse the handles uh, that went up the sides of that backpack. Uh, that's the stowage configuration for those safer units. He'll put that in a separate location as Frank Rubio um, gets Nicole Mann situated on the side there so they can start working with her suit, uh, removing the helmets and gloves and getting her comfortable and readjusted back into the station's uh, internal environment. Meanwhile, Koichi Wakata, you can see, is still in the crew lock. He is patiently waiting his turn um, until he'll be go on the right side from this view across from uh, where Nicole Mann is situated now. You can also see that long bag that they towed all the way out to and from the work site. Inside that bag is that mid strut that will be uh, taken out on a future spacewalk to finish the installation of uh, the modification kit uh, that's on the 1A power channel. Even uh, with the conclusion of the spacewalk today, we'll continue our coverage until uh, they start doffing the suits and removing the helmets.
Same process for uh, Koichi Bakata to get him situated um, so Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida can continue removing the um, components of the suit and get them out so they can um, get ready for a good night's rest, really, after a long day of spacewalking. The spacewalking time of 7 hours and 21 minutes is just really the official time of the spacewalk itself and used for engineers uh, for a variety of purposes, um, mainly in, in understanding con the consumable constraints and um, really uh, understanding the timeline as well. But uh, for the crew, it's a much, much longer day. They've been in the suit for quite some time doing pre-breathing and in-suit light exercises to get ready for the spacewalk. Inside those spacesuits is a 100% oxygen environment. So part of the pre-breathing exercise and, and really getting ready to go out of the hatch is purging their body of nitrogen, which, which takes uh, time. So they've been in the suit for quite some time. Once again, uh, losing video from the International Space Station. We're lucky that most of these drops have been very, very short in duration, so we are anticipating that we'll rega regain that video from the station once again. And when we do, um, as a reminder, we'll continue our coverage until they start doffing the suits, um, showing uh, the crew and uh, them excited after uh, uh, after their journey outside to install the um uh, modification kit on the 1A power channel um, and then we'll wrap up our coverage shortly after that but we'll continue for just a little bit as a reminder the spacewalk ended uh, after 7 hours 21 minutes at uh, 2.35 p.m. central time the team here in Mission Control Houston in the International Space Station Flight Control Room you see uh, likely more uh, flight controllers than you've seen before. Right now they are actually undergoing a handover period. So as the crew members are getting inside there will be a new shift of flight controllers that will get them ready for bed and uh, do some of the cleanup activities that are necessary before uh, they enter into their pre-sleep and sleep periods for the night. Lots of activity in the equipment lock right now. Just as a reminder, Frank Rubio on the far right as the suit IV, uh, helping Koichi Wakata. Uh, on the left is Josh Cassida, helping uh, with uh, Nicole Mann and her suit. In the far back, we have uh, Roscosmos Cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev taking some photos. And it seems like we have another uh, Roscosmos Cosmonaut in the background there, um, also taking some photos.
We're following along with the Sue Doffing process for uh, Nicole Mann on the left, Wiki, Wiki, uh, Koichi Wakata on the right. Uh, on the right, helping Wakata is Frank Rubio. On the left, helping Mann is Josh Cassida. They're working to get those gloves off. It's a lot of strain during a long space walk on the fingers. Um, so it will be quite a relief uh, for the crew members to have those gloves off. Uh, it is common that after the gloves have been removed to take uh, some photos of the gloves. If you notice throughout the duration of the spacewalk, there were these periodic checks uh, for the gloves and the, what's called the HAPS, the helmet absorption pad. We'll see those once the helmets are removed. Uh, but the gloves, because they are used um, so intensively throughout a spacewalk, they're used for all of the translation or the movement across the outside of the space station. They're used for all of the work, using the pistol grip tool, grabbing onto various structures. And sometimes they have some nicks and scrapes, and so they document uh, after the spacewalk the condition of the glove. So we'll see. We might see some of the some photos of the gloves, but it looks like for now they're stowing them in the various locations. I think the priority here is really get the crew nice and comfortable now that they've uh, conducted the spacewalk, uh, allow their fingers to be free. So with the gloves removed, the next will be the helmets, and of course after the helmets are removed, uh, they'll do a hap check and all of that, but uh, after the helmets are removed is when we'll end our coverage for today. Both helmets off for each of the respective spacewalking astronauts today who have added 7 hours and 21 minutes to their total career spacewalking time. A first for both of them, um, installing the um, uh, mounting platform on the 1A power channel and finishing up some work on the 1B. Um, they will address the one strut at a later spacewalk, and teams will decide the appropriate course of action for finishing the work there um, before the IROSAs, the rollout solar arrays, arrive in the summertime. Uh, but for now, it's the end of a successful day for the spacewalking astronauts, and that'll do it for us uh, for our coverage of today's activities. Smiles all around the cabin, uh, both uh, everyone excited for the... Uh, uh, two astronauts who have added spacewalking to their career um, today. And with that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage here. This is Mission Control Houston.
Hey everybody, this is Beck, and I am a maker of music. And like the great Sun Ra said, space is the place. And I'm Farah, I work at NASA, and I use AI to explore Mars. And I brought a few friends along who know something about artificial intelligence. Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Isabel. We are both artists working with NASA using artificial intelligence. This is Ask NASA. <laughs>